go ahead and get started. So today, to start the day off, we're actually doing both Modern and Legacy today. Today, I'm going to be streaming a little bit of the Jeskai mentor lists that me, Harlan, and Zach Allen worked on. Now, all three of us that worked on that deck list finished in top 16 of SCG Syracuse, which is a hell of a uh, hell of a performance for the deck. I mean, like, that's two 11-4s and a 12-3. You know, both of us were one, me and Harlan were one win short. But... Um, overall, the deck felt good. It felt very well positioned, like we thought it was going to be. And I'm really, really happy with our process leading into this tournament as far as developing this deck. And so, a lot of our thinking behind this was that Swords to Plowshares was in a good position because Miracles had basically died from the format. Like, you don't really see Miracles at all anymore. Um, Swords to Plowshares wasn't really being respected at all. So, you think you see things like Tarmogoyf coming back into favor, whereas Tarmogoyf is usually pretty bad against the uh, Swords to Plowshares decks. Um, you see things like Depths ma really making a, uh, a splash in the format because there's no Swords to Plowshares. So, like, all of these decks, like, those are the top three decks, right? It's like Team Redelver, which is utilizing the fact that there's no Swords, and Depths, which is utilizing the fact there's no swords were the most popular decks in legacy going into syracuse those were the decks that i was like on my mind okay these are the two decks to worry about hey mason um so that makes swords of pleasures in a great position but traditional miracles decks were not built well they were not built well they're not very good and so harlan and zach started with a shell that was kind of from scratch like, they, they kind of built this deck from the ground up, and I helped test and iterate through it once I was on board with actually playing it. Because at first, I was kind of a naysayer. I was like, I don't know. If we're playing a fair deck, not playing Ren and Six seems moronic. Like, Ren and Six is so powerful, and it's just so, so dominant, that if I'm playing a fair strategy, I'm going to get obliterated by Ren and Six, and my deck is going to be less powerful if I'm not also playing Ren and Six. Turns out that's not necessarily true, because uh, Zach is a big believer in the power of Teferi, and overall, I was very, very impressed with Teferi and Monastery Mentor as far as like three drops go and accruing value there's a lot to like there's a lot to like a lot white had to offer and only being in three colors means that your mana base is a lot better than the four color deck the four color snow deck utilizes astrolabe and but needs astrolabe to really function otherwise their mana base is kind of embarrassing you're trying to support this four color deck with only basic lands like come on like you know anybody that's starting out in magic can figure out how this could be a problem and so if they don't have their astrolabe then your, your mana base just kind of looks embarrassing. So we wanted a mana base that functioned without Astrolabe, but a lot, like we could still utilize Astrolabe to splash a couple splash a couple cards and fix our mana a little bit in case we wanted to cast double white cards and stuff like that. So this is this is not where what I played in the tournament. You can find that on StarCityGames.com. I believe I got 14th place, so you can check out my list there. It's a little different from Harlan's because they were playing Spell Pierces in these two Flex Counter Spell slots, whereas I played a Spell Center and a Dovin's Veto. They were playing Spell Pierces. Um, but other than that, our lists were really, really close. Harlan and Zach Allen played the exact same 75. I deviated a little bit, but not so much that I was playing at all a fundamentally different deck. I was playing very much the same deck. And coming away from the tournament, I was happy with the list, especially with most of the main deck choices. But there was a couple things in the sideboard that I don't think we shored up well. So, go ahead and breaking down this, this deck list. You can see we got four Flooded Strands, four Prismatic Vistas, two Scalding Tarns, typical 10 fetches, pretty reasonable for a 20 land deck. Um, we got five Snow Covered Islands, one Snow Covered Mountain, two Snow Covered Plains, and one of each Dual Land. The Dual Lands kind of suck, but you have to play them because sometimes... Like, you're only a 20-land deck. Sometimes you're going to have fetch land as your only land. You're going to need to make your colors, and you're going to have to fetch those lands. So, the Tundra and the Volcanic are, like, the worst lands in your deck. Ironically, they're so expensive, and they're the worst lands in your deck. But you almost never want to fetch these. You want to basically be playing basically be playing on all basics if you can. So, that is, that's kind of how the mana base was designed. And the reason you can be so low on lands is because you're not really planning on getting wastelanded. You're planning on basically always having basics, and you don't need to draw, like, extra lands because they're not going to go into the graveyard due to wasteland so you know you're you just don't need that many lands you it opens you up to flooding and we don't have any way like in our lands to mitigate flooding no horizon lands no creature lands nothing like that so um 20 lands while it is low i think is actually probably the correct number but there are some times where you're just gonna have to mulligan like hands that don't function what's up scoops one of each dual land where's the plateau right <laughs> that land is so bad Hey, the resub from Scoops. Thank you very much for the resub. Two months in a row. Second month is the most important. Really appreciate it. I guess it's the second most important, but either way, thank you very much for your support. If you got a sub list for me to play, put it in the Discord, please. All right, going, moving on to the spells before I drag this on forever and never actually play Magic. Uh, we have three Swords of Plowshares, four Brainstorm, four Ponder, uh, three Astrolabes. So the only thing that should look kind of weird to you here is the three Astrolabes. So like, okay, well, wait a minute. You're playing an Astrolabe strategy and you don't want four. Everyone's talking about how busted the card is. Why don't you want four? 
we're not that good of an Astrolabe deck, right? Like, we're not like the four-color deck where we have to draw one every game. The thing about Astrolabe is there is a real cost to playing it. It's kind of clunky. If you have a bunch of them in your hand, they're not blue cards that pitch the force, and they're not really a very powerful cantrip. They're just kind of something that you, like, need to put on the table and draw a card. And, like, is still good with Teferi being able to, like, pick it up. Like, it has some synergies. But realistically, it's only really fixing your mana, and it's kind of slow. Like, it is only one mana, but this takes time. You need to actually cast this, and that means you're not doing other things. You're, you know, opening yourself to days, potentially, if you're trying to, like, cast this and then do something else. You can open you up to getting days more. So, like, Astrolabe does have a real cost to put in your deck, despite how free it looks. It is close to free, but not quite. And we found that our deck basically always wanted to draw one Astrolabe, but the second one could be very easily clunky, especially in the face of, like, Chalice decks or, like, on the draw against Delver, for instance. Like, you just don't really have time to deploy them all before you need to start taking action what's up tiki hey this deck and this guy what's up ken um so three astrolabes while it looks like just some utter bs math actually was kind of like it's kind of like the preordained slot from miracles where it's like the next worst cantrip but it like fixes your mana so like we didn't really want like we didn't have the extra slots to just dump the fourth one of these and they we found they could be just like kind of awkward and clunky just getting stranded in your hand so that's why we're on three i was happy with three like the card was good but i never really there's times i definitely drew it and didn't want it and there's definitely times that like i wanted it and didn't draw it but overall i think the times that i drew it late in the game it just didn't really matter that much were much diminished because i wasn't playing four so hope that all makes sense um, moving on, there's some flex counter spells here. I have one spell snare and one counter spell. I was really worried about Ren and Six going into the weekend. And I think that's very valid. Ren and Six was a very problematic card. And there's also a lot of Tarmogoyf, Stredward Arcanists. I mean, even the two drops out of Depths are big, right? Like Sylvan Scrying, uh, Vampire Hex Mage. This just has a lot of targets in the format right now. So I was really happy with Spell Snare, even though Zach Allen and Harlan both um, moved to Spell Pierces in these two slots. Um, I was still very happy with the Spell Snare, and I was impressed. It seemed to always have targets. Plus, it pitches to Force. You're awkward and clunky. Thanks, baby girl. Hey, Tannen. How are you? How have you been? Are you going to be in Atlanta? You said you were, right? You're going to get to meet my wife because she's going to be coming with me and playing in the main event. Um, anyways, there's also a... this. I played a Dovin's Veto in this slot in the uh, opening Syracuse. I changed it to a Counterspell here because I'm actually... The card that gave me the most trouble over the course of the weekend was True Name Nemesis. And you're going to see that's kind of how I've tried to hedge up my sideboard a little bit too. Putting an extra like moat in here and like, you know, just you know cutting the verdict and trying to answer it in a, in a different way. Like instead of trying to beat... Uh, true name through like a bunch of councils and verdicts like I want something a little more permanent that stays in play but I'll talk about that here in a second but overall like true name nemesis was a card that gave me a little bit of fits and uh Dovin's Veto was not really getting countered that often most of the time so I really want to try a counter spell the blue blue is easier than blue white in this mana base given that we're the five basic island deck and um yeah it's just a little more flexible and I think it's I think it's going to be a little bit of an upgrade so we're going to give that a try um I haven't actually tried it at all yet we're going to give that a try today on stream it's one of the things I'm going to be looking out for is is this card better than a Dovin's Veto uh, moving on to the creatures real quick, because that's just like kind of what seems to fit next. Three Snapcaster Mage, three Monastery Mentor. This is very like reminiscent of like an old Miracle style deck, but you're a little more mid rangey with these tap out, like these these Planeswalkers and stuff like that. Um, Snapcaster Mage still helps you recruit card advantage and is very good with Teferi. A lot of what we're trying to do here is trying to leverage our three mana Planeswalkers very well. And Teferi picking up Snapcaster Mage is disgusting. So being able to get that kind of card advantage engine going as well as just having all your one mana cantrips as well as source of pleasures to flash back makes Snapcaster a good choice for our deck. So having three of them is not, shouldn't really be too much of a shock. Three Monastery Mentor, it is what we found to be just kind of the best clock slash card advantage source. Because Monastery Mentor do it does give you virtual card advantage in the first form of these prowess monk tokens. And so, like, that is, like, a pseudo card advantage engine and pairs well with our six force of will effects. Um, so, like, we have this, like, card advantage to make up for the card disadvantage as well as the free counterspell aspect of the forces that we think are really good. And also just like very powerful clock. Like if you can tap out with Mentor, like maybe force something or whatever and untap with the Mentor, you have all these cantrips and stuff to just get going and including Planeswalkers, stuff like that. Everything should basically trigger the Monastery Mentor and you're in, you're in great shape. Pabst, your list inspired me to brew Mardu Mentor. I know it isn't the best color combo for Mentor, but it's my favorite color combo and I love Mentor. Hey, you know what, Pabst? Do whatever you want. <laughs> I guess he's really wide open right now. So if you can figure out and have a plan for all the decks in the format, I think you're in great shape. Moving on, like I said, before I get too, too distracted. I'm going to Atlanta, drink waifu. Yes. Wait, you're married? Yes, Tiki, I'm married. Um, anyways, moving on. Let's talk about the 
Planeswalkers next, since I've already kind of talked about them a little bit. The Planeswalkers are where we're recouping our card advantage from forcing. So really you want to... Move these out of the way. <laughs> we're going to put them by the lands right now. You're really trying to recoup the card advantage that you got from forcing, because this is a lot of force of will effects. You're really trying to recoup card advantage in your three mana slots. You know, you're trying to buy yourself time with forces, you know, set up, cantrip, do whatever you need to do, buy yourself time with your force of will effects, and then recoup that card advantage through your, your three and four drops, through Monastery Mentor, through Narset, through Teferi, and through Jace. All of these cards give you card advantage in some way or another, and all of them pair very well with Force of Will. You know, Narset f recoups the card advantage as well as finding the Force of Wills. Teferi just draws more cards and just, like, you know, pairs well with your actual Force of Wills as far as not getting countered back. Um, and Jace the Mind Sculptor just, like, mentally mages your, your counter spells. Anyway, J Jace the Mind Sculptor obviously brainstorms one of the best card advantage sources in Magic and one of the only four drops playable in Legacy. Um, so these, this is kind of like a package. The fact that we have six force wells as well as some planeswalkers to recoup card advantage is where our deck gets a lot of its core power and a lot of how we're planning on grinding out other decks. Um, next up we got Magmatic Sinkhole. This is once again a respect for, uh, Ren and Six. This card answers Ren and Six pretty cleanly as long as you have it when they play Ren and Six in the next turn or two. Um, it's also a one mana removal spell, which is a good floor for most other matchups, being able to answer walkers as well as just kill a problematic creature. We don't have a lot of taxation on our graveyard because it's only Snapcaster Mages and we got plenty of things with fetches and all that stuff that use our graveyard. So Magmatic Sinkhole is actually a pretty natural include and I was very impressed with them over the course of the weekend. They were very castable off the Astrolabes and our Splash Red Sources and they were very, very powerful. Being able to kill Planeswalkers matter a lot and being able to be like just being an instant speed one mana removal spell also mattered a lot like basically your uh, fifth and sixth sorts of plowshares i was really really impressed with that um and last but not least we have a supreme verdict uh harlan and zach both cut the they swapped the number on their council's judgment they moved it from the sideboard to the main and cut put the verdict in the side with their second verdict um uh, i liked having the one of verdict as an out to a go wide strategy in the main deck plus it also is just like another good it's a better answer to true name nemesis in my opinion because it's uncounterable whereas like a lot of times the delver decks are going to try to stick a true name and play protect the queen with it just counter everything that targets the true name or like i guess doesn't target it but would get rid of the true name and this is just uncounterable so i really like having access to it and in matchups it's bad unlike council's judgment when council's judgment is bad you're just kind of stuck with it it's blue so it pitches to the forces so I was really happy with the main deck Supreme Verdict. I really, really wanted to keep playing it, and so it was, it was good. I liked my choices. Um, speaking of the main deck Council's Judgment, we are main decking one. Another answer to Planeswalkers like Ren and Six is important, as well as another answer to uh, True Name Nemesis. Council's Judgment's like, once again, another really good bad card, where it just answers everything you need it to, but god, man, it's a lot of mana. It is a lot of mana. And so you don't want a million of them. That's why I didn't put the second one in the main deck. The times it's bad. If you ever draw the second one, you hate yourself. And I was kind of off that. And we, we all main decked to Back to Basics just because it was very free to do. It's not that we thought Back to Basics was actually that good because all of us were kind of low on it. We're like, the card's not great. But the thing is, the ceiling on it is still very high. And the floor on it's pretty low. Once again, blue. Pitches to Force. And at the end of the day, it, like I've had it just be a prowess trigger for my Monastery Mentor. It's just something you can proactively play that triggers your Monastery Mentor has mattered. And, uh, yeah, like, it's free to do because our, our mana base is all basics, so it's just, like, it doesn't cost us anything to put this in our main deck and the ceiling's really high. Maybe if you steal, like, one free win off of it, then it was worth its slot, in my opinion. So, I liked it, but overall, I think that the sideboard back to basics should have been a blood moon because, like I said, the, the back to basics wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I, like, I really wanted a blood moon effect, so having the second back to basics in the sideboard was kind of nonsense, but I think the main deck one was very, very free. Roderick, don't forget my boy Omnath as a legacy playable four drop. Right. Hey, Shadows, how are you? By the way, I sent you a deck list on Facebook. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, all right, all right. That was the main deck. If you have any questions, post them in the chat. I'll try to answer them after I'm done. But I really want to power through this. Um, moving on to the sideboard. So there's a lot going on with this sideboard. So I'll start with the obvious ones. Pyroblast. Uh, once again... Uh, blue spells, really prominent in Legacy. Trinity Nemesis, big problem. Harlan actually said he wanted a third Pyroblast, and I'm still willing to consider that, but I want to try to beat it through other means first. But Pyroblast, one of your better cards in your deck. Um, a lot of blue cards you want to counter. Good against both combo, like Sneak and Show, as well as fair matchups like this, where it's countering Jaces and all. Like, all our Planeswalkers are blue, right? Like, they would all be problematic on the other side of the table. So Pyroblast, you don't have to justify too much. It's a good card. 
Hydroblast is, uh, two Hydroblasts especially, is once again, more respect for Ren and Six. At its best, like, you know, if you're trading up on mana, being able to counter a Ren and Six, then you're in good shape. And also, like, you know, it counters Pyroblasts, which are good against our deck. We just talked about how Pyroblast is good, like, in our, these fair style mirrors against our Planeswalkers and stuff like that. So Pyroblast, I mean, Hydroblast, therefore, is actually good, like, against decks trying to Pyroblast us. So I would bring it in, for instance, against Four Color Control. A deck that doesn't have that many red spells, but they have, like, Colorguns Command, Ren and Six, and Pyroblast. And those are all high impact cards that I'm going to want to counter, especially at the rate of one mana. So Pyroblast, pretty reasonable. Um... And there's, like, Dreadhorde Arcanist still around that you can blow up, stuff like that, too. Legacy on MTGO isn't too bad, is it? It's not too, too bad. Um, the Blood Moon, like I said, I really want... This was a second back to basics. I really, really wanted a Blood Moon, though. Something a little more hateful that, like, still doesn't impact us very much, but is just, like, a little more, like, lights out for these lands kind of style strategies. Things like Shrek, the Dialome deck that just got around. Um, things like Depths. Things like... The, the Teamer Delver, like when I bring it against Teamer Delver, back to basics was questionably good because sometimes they could just like daze, maybe play another land and still cast a spell, and like that mattered if we were low on resources. So Blood Moon, something a little more hateful. Um, I'm interested in trying out, but this was a second back to basics originally. Uh, the second council's judgment in the sideboard is more respect for true name nemesis, Ren and Six, Planeswalkers, stuff like that, as well as just generic problematic permanence. You'll notice I don't have very many answers to artifacts or enchantments in the sideboard. I'm really, really relying on our counter spells plus our council's judgments to make up that ground against decks that are trying to play impactful enchantments and artifacts against me. Because I don't think A, there's that many of them, and B, I think the ones that exist, like trying to prepare for them is awkward and hard to do, so... I didn't really want to overload on effects like a braid because they were just too low impact for the cost or even things like wear tear. Like I wanted access to one wear tear, but not more than that. I, I'm really just going to rely on council's judgment to answer these problematic permanents as well as counter spells. So that's that's the second council's judgment. Wear tear, like I said, well, want an answer to artifacts and enchantments that's reasonable on rate and can be card advantage in some matchups, things like land, stuff like that. It was, it was I was impressed with one and I'm glad I didn't overload enough effects that, that do naturalizing. Um, next up is Surgical Extraction, which you'll see paired with these Rest in Pieces. Um, the Rest in Pieces were a last minute change and were uh, Rest in Pieces. They were originally like Surgicals and like a Containment Priest for me. Um, so like a second Surgical and a Containment Priest. I liked Rest in Peace a lot against the Teamer deck because it shuts down Arcanist, Tarmogoyf, and Renin Six. And so being able to bring that in and maybe trim on like the less effective answers against all those cards like magmatic sinkhole we trimmed like one snapcaster mage it sucks to trim these cards because you actually want them in the matchup but i view rest in peace as actually just an upgrade over magmatic sinkhole like you're improving this slot train you're improving this slot so even though you kind of it's unfortunate that you have to cut the magmatic sinkholes and a, a snapcaster mage when sideboarding against teamer the rest of pieces are such an upgrade that i think it's well worth it um, the Surgical Extraction, I didn't play a third Rest in Peace like Zach and Harlan did because I wanted to have a little bit more respect for Blackguard Reanimator, a deck that I actually expected to be more popular than it was because I think it's a very powerful deck. But overall, like, I, I didn't play against it at all, so the Surgical was, was a little embarrassing, but even I don't even think Harlan and Zach on their Cyber Guards brought in the third uh, Rest in Peace against um, the Ren and Six decks. They only wanted two because drawing the second one doesn't really do anything if the first one resolved. So, overall, I liked the split. I'm going to maintain the split. I'm like, I didn't hate it. And especially online, I respect Black Red Reanimator a lot. Um, yeah, so I, I said Containment Priest. It was actually a second Containment Priest. I still have a Containment Priest in this list. This helps a lot online, but overall, it was actually really bad in paper. Um, I still like it against decks like DNT because the Aether Vials and the Flicker Wisp things. I still like it against like Sneak and Show and Reanimator and even decks like Dredge. Like it has a lot of it has a lot of applications, but overall, I'm, this slot was one of the weaker ones that I played in paper. And if I'm playing GP Atlanta this weekend, this is a card I have my eye on for cutting from my deck. But I like it a lot. It is very high impact in the matchups. It's good. And, I mean, it's it's obviously a very good hate bear. Um, moving on, we got Palace Jailers. These are, this is the card that we tried first to beat Ren and Six, and honestly, it was very good against Ren and Six. Like, if you're, if you're thinking in your head about how Ren and Six gameplay plays out, they're drawing a bunch of lands, they're, like, shooting down all your X1s, and Palace Jailer just doesn't really care about that. Like, Ren and Six in no way, like, attacks you, so they can't get the Monarch back. Um, the lands, like, you don't really care if they're drawing lands, if we're potentially drawing a, a good card off Monarch every turn. And it, you know, like I said, it doesn't get pressured. It just lines up very well against the Ren and Six board states. If they're trying to grind you out with Ren and Six, playing a Palace Jailer and just maintaining the Monarch is a very, very good place to be. 
And we also found it was just good in like random creature matchups. Like I brought him in against DNT. I brought them in against uh, Depths because you know you can, if you can catch an Elvish Reclaimer, that's disgusting. Um, it's just like a very very powerful card. And I don't think there was a single time that I put this card on the stack and was like, oh, you know, it's only fine. Like the card was incredible. The times it was good, it was great. The times it was bad, we were, I was very behind, like very behind. And it just like wasn't enough. And I can't really put that too much on the card, but. Specifically in the matchup four color control, I played that twice on the weekend and played it twice on an empty board and just ran away with the game. Like the game was not even close to competitive. And it was just disgusting because it dodges all of the like good counters. It dodges force of negation, it dodges red blast, which you see a lot of people bringing in. It dodges uh, cards like fluster storm, it dodges spell pierce. Like there was multiple times where I was playing when we were testing the team or Delver matchup too, where I had run and six and my hand was like bolt, blast, like, you know, force negation, fluster, whatever. And it, uh, you know, one of the testing buddies played a palace jailer and I was just like, holy cow, I can't win. My hand went from like multiple sideboard cards and impactful cards of the matchup and a planeswalker and play like, I'm just very ahead to I can't win the game. And so palace jailer, very swingy card. I was very, very impressed with it. Um, and almost want to main deck them over uh, Jason. So that's something I'm going to be thinking about too, is like, is Jace better than Palace Jailer in some of the games we're playing? Because holy cow, Jailer was so, so good in the games. And I was honestly most impressed with this card on the weekend. Um, last but not least is the two cards that I'm trying out. These, this was a Celestial Purge and a Supreme Verdict. Both of those were respect for Depths and, um, what's it called? Like True Name, just like True Name decks, Sweeper decks, Delver, stuff like that. And I want to try Moat because it's kind of like a Supreme Verdict that stays in play and they can't answer. Like the only thing that gets through it is Delver of Secrets, right? And, but it answers True Name Nemesis, which I found to be the most problematic card out of Team or Delver other than their Planeswalkers. And so being able to have something that could just stay in play and forever answer those cards seems much more impactful than Supreme Verdict out of the sideboard. We're still going to play one of the main because it pitches to force, but the moat is something that, like I said, Miracles used to play it for the Eldrazi matchup, and while Eldrazi isn't relevant anymore, it did still come in matchups like the uh, the Delver matchup, and it, it was impactful there. I, I'm willing to give it a shot there. And Ensnaring Bridge is a card I don't love too much because of Abrupt Decay against Depths, but it's really good against uh, Dark Depths decks. And, um, yeah, it's just, like, not something that they can Sejuri step. It's not something that they can Sylvan Safekeeper. I found the hardest card for me to beat out of Depths was actually Sylvan Safekeeper because I have so many sorts of Plowshares effects with Celestial Purge, Swords, and stuff like that. That, um, I just wanted something that dodged, sidestepped all that. So the one Ensnaring Bridge is respect for that. And I'm not sure if it's actually going to be good. It, it seems a little narrow to me because I'm not really sure we want it in the Delver matchup because we do want to be drawing cards in the Delver matchup and keeping our hand full. Um, but it does seem very, very good against the Dark Depths deck. So we're going to be giving that a try. I'm going to field questions and then we'll get started. I'm sorry that took forever. All right. Where do we start? Too bad. More than any bad is too bad for my broke ass. Fair. You aren't worried about giving them a free Merit Lage with Depths? Abrupt Decay on the Moon. I'm a little worried about it, but Abrupt Decay is really hard, Cheesehead. It's really hard to cast under, uh, cast Abrupt Decay under Blood Moon, and I'm hoping with, like, mentors and stuff like that, we can assemble a kill before that would happen. Plus, Ensnaring Bridge is kind of part of that, right? Like, we're trying to assemble this, like, prison against them that is just like, okay, Blood Moon and Ensnaring Bridge. Like, okay, you have a Decay. Which one do you Decay? Probably Blood Moon. Cool. We have an Ensnaring Bridge. Like, beat it. Um, I'm going to sit here and pretend to understand what the fuck's going on. Fair. Dreadnought Arcanist is a legacy staple. It's very good in legacy, yes. Uh, I need advice to tell them. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's a rare and a very heavily printed set. Priest is only good when DNT is good or when Dredge and Reanimator are prevalent. I think it's fine. There was also Sneak and Show batting around. I would be happy to discuss if Jace or Jailer is better after stream. I'm open to discuss this with the deck a lot. Finally, off Miracles and playing this. This deck's very good. Do you have a moat and paper? I do, Janky. I actually used to have two because Joe Lissette was playing a list a long time ago and I like I actually won one from a tournament and then traded into the other one for um, uh, from like these traders that used to be around that were basically like Puka traders in paper and this was before they spiked into like a million dollars because boats are insanely expensive now but uh, like so I've had them for a while. And I sold off one of them to pay for some stuff because I was like, no one's going to play Moat ever. And now here I am considering Moat again, right? Uh, but I do own a single Moat. Um, is it bad that this deck only has one two drop in the main? It is bad. That is something that Harlan was complaining about a lot, actually, about the deck, was that um, he wanted a, an impactful two drop, like anything. Just an impactful two drop. And we, we didn't really land on anything to play. But uh, the fact this this doesn't curve well from uh, one 
uh, to two is is something that is a big downside to the stack. I was going to say that if you didn't have a moat, I have access to two. Jesus, Ken. All right, all right. That should be fielding all the questions. Let's play some magic, and we can discuss more stuff while playing magic. Boop. Boop. So many words. I feel like I just, like, talked for, like, an entire uh, entire speech or something. I don't know. Maybe I've just been talking a lot recently, so, like, my voice is going out, but... Yeah, I mean, there's a chance I play two modes, but mode is a four drop, and we already have two Palacios in the sideboard, so, like, having four four mana cards in our sideboard seems kind of nonsense. Like, our deck's already really clunky. We probably want more efficient answers when we're sideboarding, but... Thanks, Paps. That means a lot. All right, we need to fix this real quick. Yeet. Yeet. All right, what are we thinking here? Sand looks great to me. I basically... Something you need to know about me in Legacy. I'll keep... I'll keep... Hold on. I will keep these three cards. Land, like a source, a fetch land, and a brainstorm, and anything else. These could be any cards in our deck, and I would keep this hand. Because brainstorm is that powerful. Brainstorm's busted, chat. Let nobody convince you otherwise. Brainstorm is busted. Okay. Just Pluto Delta go. You got it, bud. Uh, there's a chance we, like, want a swords maybe on turn one. So I'm going to play the fetch land first so we can fetch Tundra. We have access to no other white sources. Uh, but if we do not want to swords, like, we, we're going to assess the matchup, obviously. Then I'm probably going to brainstorm and grab a basic. Oh, this looks like Team Redelver. Oh, maybe not. Okay. All right. Well, we probably need to consider fetching away this Force of Will. We're not going to make a decision until next turn and see if they have a three-mana walker because making our land drops in the four-color control matchup is very good. But this does appear to be four-color control. And like I said, Palace Jailer. I found this matchup to be very good because of Palace Jailer. Like, you can just, like, eat their one strix and the game ends. <laughs> All right. Their calling against commands are also a lot worse because all of our answers to creatures are like swords and stuff like that. What you got? Fetch. Interesting. Him me. We're going to try to find a spell snare, so let's go ahead and brainstorm. We can also put our best cards on top. Hmm. Well, Teferi's very good, but he doesn't really have a lot of pressure for it. We have a Swords to Plowshares. Um, I don't think I'm going to force this. I think I just want to put back my Force in the Tundra. Hmm. Actually, this is an interesting brainstorm. Like, do we want to tuck something and draw it? We probably do. Let's put this back and the Teferi back, and we'll just let this happen. Hopefully we don't discard the Ashley, but I don't care much if we do. All right, we lost a land. That is fine. Um, well, I guess, I don't think they play Wastelands, so we'll just fetch the Tundra. It's kind of sketchy that I kept this Force of Will, given I don't think it's very good, but me, I think it's better than like some of the other cards we were working with, like the extra lands and stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna plus this up. We're gonna we're gonna want to keep this in play just to metally mage all their counter spells. We're gonna hope they don't have like a million answers to like this. And then next turn we'll just like Astrolabe pick it up swords or whatever. Oh, we discarded swords. I guess we'll snap swords, pick up our Snapcaster Mage. What is this, Narset? Um, well, that's unfortunate. We can force this and we'll know it works. The question is, how do we beat the Strix after that? Because, like, we could counsel it, but we don't have the second white and Astrolabe. We want to get the card off Astrolabe, so I'm going to go ahead and force this. I was hoping, like, because they didn't play it on turn three, they didn't have it. So this is, like, really unfortunate. My line looks a lot worse in the face of, like, them having that there. Which sucks. Attack Teferi. That's fine. We 
really don't want to lose our Teferi. Sinkhole, that's a good one. Um, sure, let's Astrolabe. Ponder. Um, yeah, I guess let's go ahead and pick up our Astrolabe. We just want to cash out like for as many cards as we can, right? Yeet. Yeet. Get our cards out of it. Source of Flashers was a good pickup. Because this that means we get to save the Magmatic Sinkhole for follow-up uh, walkers. So we're going to Swords of the Baleful Strix. Oh, these are all good cards. Uh, top. Top. Because the, the Force Negation can be hard cast. Unfortunately, we're going to have to play a little bit faster, most likely, given how this game's playing out. They probably have, like, a Bolt or something, maybe even, like, a Red and Six to kill our Teferi here. I would not be shocked to lose our Teferi, but we already cashed it out for a bunch of cards. If we don't lose it, I think we're in great shape. White. Let's go ahead and Swords this. All right, and now that keeps them from uh, Colagons commanding it back. So if they want a Colagons command it, it's not very good. I expected it to get it to get it bolted, so I was cool with that trade. Um, I think I'm going to snap cast Ponder here. Maybe I will wait till end step and snap Brainstorm or something. But I really don't want that land. <laughs> Snapcaster Mage. Target, Ponder. They have two cards left in hand, so we're ahead on cards pretty aggressively. Ponder. Just looking for more walkers and stuff. Definitely shuffling. Ponder? I'm, I'm going to hold that in case we want to force negation the next thing. Ideally, we don't have to, but we may. We may. I don't know what would make us because we have the sinkhole, but... You never know. We have answers to walkers out the wazoo. We, we, we can beat planeswalkers. Push. Deal. That cashes out our two-for-one for sure because we already pondered off this and discarded the cards. So that locks in the two-for-one. Animate dead. What the fuck? What? Why is this in your deck? What? Are they a World Gorger Dragon deck? They might be a World Gorger Dragon deck, Chan. Remember that part where I said, I don't know... What would make me do this? Remember that part? I remember that part. So what do they have? They can snap him, and they have one card in the end? Uh, whatever. This can't be good, so we're just going to force it. We'll take draw steps and trust we'll draw better than our opponent. We're ahead of card. We have two good answers in our hand. We're just going to hope to draw better. I'm going to hold that land. <laughs> I don't understand the anime dead. I'm a little spooked now, chat. I'm a little spooked. Your old friend, World Gorger. I know a thing or two about World Gorger. Big fan of the deck. Magmatic Sinkle, notice, notably not very good against it. All right, we drew a bad cantrip. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is actually exactly what I'm talking about. Astrolabe is not a card I want to draw a bunch of in the late game. Uh, Well, we're still going to hold the land. Next turn, we're going to play it to have Hardcast Force up. Well, they've drawn a lot of lands, but if they draw, like, a Desolate Lighthouse or something, we're in a little bit of trouble. Good card. Jeez. All right, go. We've not drawn well, but I don't think they have either. We're still ahead two cards. Strix. I don't want to give them targets for their Call of Guns command, but I kind of want to counter this because it's an answer to their stupid... Um, it lets them combo off. <laughs> Whatever, I'm just going to cash this out. Because these removal spells are good against walkers, bad against Strix. And counter spells are good against Strix and, like, less good against uh, walkers because they can sometimes, uh, they'll just fight back maybe. I don't know, it's kind of bad logic, but whatever. Oh my god, help. Ah, more Force of Wills. These are, like, the worst cards in the matchup. We're five mana canceling out here. And we're insanely behind on time. Yeet. Verdict. Ain't it, Chief? Go. 
Maybe I'm supposed to play this land. I don't know. Okay, you're at four cards in hand. There are five. Our cards are not good. Oof. All right. We're out here. These have been some rancid draw steps. And this is the problem with Faradex and Legacy. And this is the problem that I had in some of my games on the weekend. Is that, like, sometimes you just draw bad cards to match up. Like, we got our Teferi answered. If we were Teferi picking up these Astrolabes and stuff like that, like, we'd just be in, like, completely different shape. All right, let's well, start. Walkers. Narset counts. Top. 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 No. Uh, blue, blue, blue. Here's Narset. Stop it. I imagine they're going to fuck me to cancel this. We're going to force it. Okay. Here comes our five mana cancel. Yeet, 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 yeet. All right. Force will that. Pitching that. F off. I don't know how many bolts they have in their deck. But I'm definitely down ticking. Uh, I think I'm going to fetch first. God, if they have Magmatic Sync Call, I get so punished, though. <gasps> Do they really? Do they have Magmatic Sync Call? Oh, no. No. Oh, they have a Tomb. Okay, I don't care about that. That's fine. I couldn't do anything about that anyway. There's my boy, the dragon. All right, Chad, help. I don't know what to do. Minus. Uh, brainstorm, Jace, Narset. Well, I don't know how they're going to dragon me. How are they going to dragon me? They can't draw all the cards. They can flashback Bolt. This doesn't do anything. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get dragoned, Chad. I think I'm going to take this, this Jace. I don't think I can get dragoned. We're going to play this land and hope we don't get dragoned. But I don't know what their win condition is. Because they can't draw extra cards currently. So if they play like Baleful Strix or whatever, they can't win. A, uh, oh, what's it called? Oh, no, they have a Bolt. All right, well, that's bad. Am I dead? Never said. That's fine. I can beat that one. Okay. Anime dead. Anime dead world burger dragon. This thing's a 7-7, seven, seven, right? Uh, I guess we'll kill this. Oh, we need to get rid of our Snapcaster Mage. Do we have any other creatures? I don't think we do. All right. Uh, sure. We can't let them reanimate Snapcaster. All right. Do your worst. I, I don't know what your last card. Maybe the last card is just the Thirst for Knowledge. You're about to witness why I never played this deck online. All right, chat. I don't know what's happening, but hopefully we don't die. Strix. Oh, they just they just use it to reset their mana and draw a card. That's fine. Him, my last two cards. That's bad. Okay, they have an O one to our top decking, and we have a force, and we play on, chat. We play on. This is very, very silly. Well, now they have a combo engine, and we're down to... We've drawn no Monastery Adventures. We've gone through one of our Jaces, I think both of our Narsets. No, only one of our Narsets. One of our Teferi, so one of each of our Planeswalkers we've been through. Counterspell, that's a good one. Alright, well, I don't think we're going to lose this game, but we need to play a lot faster. Snapcaster. Okay, I still get that. Reanimate it. 
Yeah, can I spell that? Blue. Blue. Cut it out! Stop playing things that are scary. Alright, well now we're handless again. We take those. The question is, do we wait a turn on this brainstorm? I think we do. I would like to wait a turn if possible. We'll see if they let me. Because they probably have a lot of discard. I played a lot of discard when I played this deck. Also, we need to keep in mind they're like not far off hard casting Grizzle Brand. Which is something I've also done in this deck. This is going to be probably not very good. Oh, no. What are you doing? Return Snapcaster. Brainstorm. Well, uh, put, yeah, mentor then back to basics. This card, this card. What are you doing? Snapping, what do you have for five mana? I don't know what they have for five mana, but. They fetched a bunch of basics, which makes me not want to cast this. All right. Snap it. Target command. They don't have another target, do they? Cast it here. We're getting ground out, chat. It's all two for ones. The next all two for ones. Turn target creature. Oh, they have a dragon. They're just going to draw the dragon. Okay. <laughs> sure, dude. Go ahead. You going you gonna to cast it? I guess it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. No, you're not going to cast it. What the fuck? <laughs> I guess this happens sometimes where you just cast it. Okay. Wait, if we kill it, we're dead, right? Yeah, if we kill it, we're, we're just dead. We have to, like, swords it. This is so stupid. Alright, whatever. 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 This is fine. We're gonna die to a world or to dragon jet. <laughs> this game's really dumb. Ah! Never in my entire life have I cast... Alright, sometimes you die to a oh, world guard, you dragon, I suppose. Chat, help! <laughs> I did not sign up to try to beat this. Okay! Ah! <laughs> so the problem with palace dealers is they can kill it and reanimate it. So palace dealer is actually a lot worse than you think. This card's great, though. Being able to blow up the thing in response means we don't get comboed. Although they're not probably going to try to combo us post board anyway. The rest of the beast is still very good. Um, I dislike Sinkhole. I like the Blasts. And I don't mind Surgical. Maybe Container Breeze is better. Because at least it attacks. The Floor and Container Breeze is higher. Verdict's bad. Force Negations are fine because you can cast them. I actually don't like Mentor for the same reason. They can reanimate our Mentors and start attacking with them. And they have like Bolts and stuff like that. Not a good spot to be in. Uh, Spellster's good. Swords is okay. This card's, like, only kind of fine. We have, like, Hydro Blast and stuff like that. Cut, like, a Snapcaster Mage. Because huh. a lot of the, a lot of the Graveyard stuff, even though they tend to board out of the combo, and just, like, into more two-for-ones, like... They, a lot of them still use the graveyard, so it's just, like, worth doing. Hmm. Trying to decide what I want access to. I'm not, still really not in love with swords. I guess I should, like, line up what I'm doing here. Enter, and I guess I've missed something. 66. Yeah, we need to cut a sixth card. We've cut some. It means I cut something else in the deck. What am I doing? Do I only have a 14 card sideboard? Am I stupid? No, I'm not stupid. Whatever. I've messed something up somewhere. Oh, back to basics is really bad. How did I mess this up? I'm missing a card. The verdict? 
Oh yeah, the verdict. I'm done. There, there used to be a verdict on the sideboard. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with this. Force negations aren't great, but the fact it's hard castable, like this matchup's not going to be slow. As you saw, this matchup is quite grindy. Honestly, I might have too many Swords of Postures in my deck, and maybe actually do want Palace Jailer, but I don't really know. It's it's hard to say. Hard to say. All right, Island. We kept this. Hand's reasonable. If we hit a third land, we're, we're in good shape. We have a... Uh, we want to play the Mentor on four, because we have the Blast to protect it, or unless they tap out on... Uh, their turn two, I guess we can slam it and have force negation up, but I imagine we're gonna get discarded before that happens. So it'd be like that sometimes. Ponder, sure, let's ponder. Pyroblast, pyroblast, snapcaster mage. I don't really want any of this. I don't know why. I want to land. All right, well, we drew another ponder. I'll cast it. Spew the cantrips. Uh, top. Uh, I think I want both these lands, so we're going to draw them both. I think next time we're going to want to try to keep our Teferi in play. They're not going to play anything. Maybe we just play our land to pass. In fact, that's I think exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to take this game slow. Uh, the upside of having access to all of our uh, all of our counter magic with just playing one extra land is really high. I maybe should have played the fetch land, but I think I want this other monastery mentor. Just like another threat. Like I expect the first one to kind of get countered. So yeah, fetch. Uh, I'm gonna grab a red source. How many red cards? We have two red cards in the deck. Maybe not. Maybe I don't care. I don't think they're going to blow up my lands in any way, so I'll just grab this. Here's my damage. There's no argument to playing Teferi first, but I want the counter. I want the, the creature off of playing Teferi, so we're just going to wait till next turn. And there's a chance maybe I want a Hydro Blast plus Force Negation. Like, I'm going to try to get them to, like, bait a Colagon's Command here, which could happen. Could just be, like, a Bolt. Could be a Fatal Push. If it's a push, we're just going to let it go. We're not going to fight over one Fatal Push. Yes, be a Collagon's command. Okay. Okay. Laughs in Hydro Blast. Collagon's command. What you got there, bud? Oh, I see. Make me discard a card and try to shoot it. Mm, that'd be really good. If it works, taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. And I can't even force back because it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, yeah, chat. Oh, yeah. That's that good stuff. Good stuff. Is there a reason we fetch there as opposed to holding up the fetch and drawing the mentor if we wanted to? What do you mean? We, we already drew the mentor. The mentor's already in our hand. I don't understand the question. We could have played the fetch. Oh, no. Uh, well. Uh, well. Hmm. Oh, no. Oh, that's so bad. I guess we should force, and then we have the upside of drawing a cantrip for mentor cantrip. That sucks. Maybe we just don't force. If we discard these two, then we have force backup. If we don't discard Teferi, we're in great shape. If we discard the force negation, it's kind of rough. The question is, like, entirely whether or not we want to try to force action this turn if they if they have pyroblast backup it's a disaster so i'm actually just gonna let it go to fairy mentor this is probably the worst two cards we could have kept nice well if they let us and tap they're not all right well we got a force negation and a force of will we take those we definitely take those there you go take some damage now we're just going to try to play this like control role while attacking. We only have three cards, so they're five because Hymnatrox is an unfun magic card. I suspect we're going to see a Snapcaster him here, and we're just going to force negation it. I 
curious as to why we cracked it. Well, if we just play the mentor and leave it, then that's bad, right? Because they can just shoot our thing and we have to fetch to Hydroblast. So, like, they can just, like, respond to our fetch or whatever. Like, we have to wait till our untap and maybe there's a there's a chance for the untap play land and they go, like, bolt and then we, like, fetch and they can, like, call a guns commander or whatever. I don't know. I shouldn't want to get trapped by, like, fetching and then them moving in response to my fetch. Because they had all their mana up. They could just, like, even do, like, multiple pushes or something like that or, like, a bolt and something else. Um, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> Thanks, I'm not Russell. It wasn't like... I mean, it wasn't the best fetch. But, like, I didn't think it mattered if we fetched or not. So I just didn't fetch. <gasps> Alright, I'm sorry. So I did fetch. And, like, tried to just, like, have lands up. I, yeah, I don't know. She said there's definitely merit to holding it, right? Because if we draw, like, a brainstorm, I feel like an idiot. But I didn't think it was that bad. Like, I thought that I'd rather have access to the mana and not get punked out by them having, like, multiple things that I want to Hydro Blast or whatever. Okay, well, that lets us hard cast a Force of Will in case they have a creature or something. Just going to keep attacking while they play lands, I guess. Snapcaster. Trying to, like, block. At this point, I'm pretty comfortable just, like, paying five mana and forcing, right? I feel like I am. Cast. Wait, no. Cancel. I want to cast it. I suspect this is going to get Hydro Blasted, and then we're going to have to actually force it. But I want to make more Mentor Tokens, so... Yeah. I'm cool just, like, doing this. I don't think this is going to work. Fluster Storm. Okay. All right, with the Fluster Storm still on the stack, we're going to want to force it again. That way, if they have Snap Fluster Storm, they can't do anything stupid. Force again. All right, there you go. Now use mana. Now they can't call a God's command, and we like get to do stuff. If they have Hydro Blast, yeah, they're just not interested. So I think what they're gonna do now is they have Collagon's command, so they're gonna like untap and Collagon's command us. But they're at five, so we just need any spell. Collagon's command me brainstorm. Okay. So a lot of the reason I was willing to fight there is because we're getting equity through the monks and through the damage that turn. Like the fact they're fighting me in combat means I'm getting the prowess triggers and actually getting equity out of that. So I was much more willing to fight, whereas I maybe wouldn't be willing to otherwise. And now you're dead, unless you find a one mana removal spell. And then even still, I have a council judgment. Now to think about it, it's probably pretty unlikely to matter. They respond to the fetch, or they can respond to the blast. Either way, if they have double removal, we got got. Agreed. Pick that up. You got it. Eat. Land? Yeah, well, land's pretty good. Uh. Watch damn inventory. Look at Astrolabe fixing our mana. See, the card just, like, makes you never get punished by how you fetch. It just never even comes close to mattering. I guess I'm behind a minute. Maybe you should, like, auto fetch or whatever why did you make me click through all that just to concede all right we picked that game off them mentor is good if you can keep it in play the problem is if they kill it they get to animate dead it and then they'll like run away with the game <sighs> makes me kind of want palace jailer i won't lie the way that game played out makes me want palace jailer chat makes me really want palace jailer but it's so dangerous because they just force it and untap and animate dead it and that's so so, so bad for us. Ugh, I'm just going to submit it as it is. The swords are still so terrible, too. But I think they're going to still have Strixes in their deck and stuff like that, and we want to be able to attack through other mentors. Like, the swords still pair nicely with the Monastery mentors, so I think I'm going to leave some in. I probably have too many of them in my deck, though. I'm not exactly well-versed on the World Gorger Dragon matchup, so I may be misplaying, and I apologize. But... We're trying. We're trying out here. Ugh. Although I probably know more of what's going on about this deck than most people, given like I've actually played it in a competitive tournament. I have zero clue what's happening, so you're right. 
So, like, the whole idea that I, I don't know, when I played it, I, like, I top 32 and open with it. Um, and actually made some mistakes. The deck was incredibly hard to play. Made some mistakes with it. But it was an idea that I developed a bunch after reading an article on Star City called Return of the Dragon. And I wrote an article about it called, in, like, or it was called Into the Dragon. And I wrote an article called Return of the Dragon. And it's, like... It's basically a Grixis control deck with a combo finish. Think of it like Legacy Splitter Twin, where, like, a lot of the deck's design is to, like, utilize your animate deads in a fair way. Like, you saw in game one how they reanimated a Strix and a uh, Snapcaster Mage, which, like, gives you more, like, graveyard recursion to, like, grind people out. And you have this combo finish with World Gorger Dragon. And, like, so you can go infinite with um, World Gorger Dragon. Like, you animate dead, you do the combo, and it just flickers all your permanents infinitely. And then with, like, Baleful Strix, for instance, you stack it to where you draw your whole deck, and then you stack it to where the uh, the draw happens um, after, like, it's you put it beneath the World Gorger Dragon Flicker, and so you just put stack infinite draws up and make infinite mana, and then you thirst for knowledge or, or what is it, Stroke of Genius. Thirst for knowledge, wrong card. Stroke of Genius, your opponent for their entire deck. So, it's pretty neat. I sneeze. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to sneeze. Oh, God. Uh, anyways. Yeah, it's very powerful because you can just, like, board out the combo cards, like the Grizzle Brand and the War Gorger Dragon, and they keep all the enemy dads in your deck, and they're just, like, they play a fair plan. Ponder. Blast and Cantrips is not something I hate to see. Um, in case my Brainstorm gets countered, I think... I think I want access to all these. I should have drawn... I didn't think about this long enough. I should have drawn the Blast next turn because I want to hide it in case they Thought sees me because I think it's going to be really good. Strix incoming. Him. Gross. Okay. Oh, no. My next land. Um, yeah, let's just play our land. And then we'll pass and in step we'll Brainstorm. And hope it doesn't get pyroblasted. The thing is, main phasing it does open us up to getting pyroblasted, which sucks. Um, that's fine. We're not going to care about that. Yeah, we're probably going to get pyroblasted here, which sucks. Don't pyroblast me, bro. They didn't pyroblast me. Uh, I don't think containment priest is something I want access to right now. And the extra ponder may be unimportant, so we're gonna put it back. Maybe we'll draw it actually. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'll draw it. I actually want that second ponder. As silly as it is. Fetch. I'm gonna grab a I guess we'll grab Tundra Volcanic again. There's no reason not to, right? We'll grab a Tundra. There's nothing white I wanna cast, so we're gonna ponder in case we draw Astrolabe. And there's Astrolabe. Wow, I'm so smart. So smart, thin, and handsome. Astrolabe. Wow. Draw. And then now we can decide if we want a fifth land. I don't think we do. I think we're going to fetch on instep. And I think we're going to grab a Volcanic Island. They grabbed a Basic Island. They sell back to Basics. Now they're just like all on grabbing their Basics. Brainstorm. Uh, I'm interested in blasting this, I think. It's it's a good target. It's the best card in Legacy, and their hand isn't obviously very good. And we can always Snapcaster it later. So, yeah, here we go. They're missing their land drop. That's just great. I think that was really heads up Pyroblast. Countering Brainstorms is something people don't do enough. It is a very, very useful thing to do, as it is the best card. Ooh, these are all very good. Top... Top, top, shove the library, no. Um, player to fairy, this will probably get blasted. Keep waiting for them to actually blast something. There it is. There's the blast. If it didn't get blasted, it's a lot of upside. If it does get blasted, I think we're still in good shape. We have force up for any like shenanigans and we have, yeah, that's fine. What's on top of our library? It's a brainstorm that we can pitch. That's fine. We're gonna snap blast this. What you got, opponent? Brainstorm, sure. 
Still missing on lands. Draw the Brainstorm. Let's cast our Snapcaster Mage. Target Pyroblast. I maybe was a little aggressive playing the Teferi since I was pretty sure they had a Pyroblast. Like, I maybe should have just, like, held up the Snap Blast. But, I don't know. I didn't... I wanted to, like, make them have it and actually make them use it. But that may have been a mistake. All right, and now we can brainstorm. I held this land so that I could put it back because I don't want it. I don't want any of it. Um, put the Resonating Vista on top because I want to fetch that land away. I think I'm going to play this Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace. We only have one Snapcatcher left in our deck. That's the only thing left in our deck that uses the graveyard because we boarded out a Snapcaster and two singles. So there's one Snapcaster left in our deck that actually uses the graveyard. Whereas they have all of their Snapcaster mages and all of their Kaligons commands. What you got, opponent? Hmm, I see. If only I was not ready for that. And being able to counter it here still has a lot of equity. Okay. This Rest in Peace is going to be a hard card for them to beat, which is, I think, why you see them squirming. Rest in Peace is a pretty problematic card for them. Yeet. All right. And we're going to exile it so they can't animate dead it, and that's just great for us. Now all their reanimation spells are turned off, which they can't get out of their deck. All their Call of Guns commands are turned off as far as, like, the best modes on them, and we're just going to get shit. Head on cards. Well, I guess virtual cards because it's a Rest in Peace. Do I care about Strix? I do not. All right, we have a fetch land to get rid of. We're gonna leave. We're not gonna attack our Snapcaster into their Strix. We're gonna hold it. It races better, and if we draw it to Fairy, then we get to uh, we can get to pick it up. So there's only one to Fairy left in our deck, but still the upside's still high. They're just like picking up our Snapcaster Mage could be good. In case they like some weird stuff happens where we eventually like pick this up and then like put spells in our graveyard, like it's. Super marginal, but just like the trade doesn't really offer us anything. Books are swords in my deck, I guess. I have zero clue what's happening, so you right. I got it. My man, what's up, Thalion? We are playing a long game against um, War Gorger Dragon. A project of mine from many moons ago that I did not expect to see ever again, and here we are. I don't know if we're winning. It's very hard to tell. They've drawn more lands than we have, which is a good sign for us. But we drew the second rest in peace, which sucks. Astrolabe was a fine draw. Here's an Astrolabe. Draw. Narset was a very good draw. Do we want to go for it? I think we do. Maybe we run the Snapcaster into it now? Nah, Snapcaster's attack for more than Strixes do, so we should just play our nurse out. If it gets blasted, I don't think we fight. What is this? Nice. Do we fight? I don't think we're supposed to fight. We only have eight minutes left, which is worth noting three cards left we lose the planeswalkers so i i think i'm off fighting like we're still very very soft the planeswalkers here so just letting it get countered seems worth it i'd rather try to protect like a mentor or something like that something that's going to win the game or and help us against walkers all right so we're at seven minutes left Probably gonna have to be a little more liberal with my like my plays and less less explaining and talky when thinking. That was the other thing about World Roger Dragon is you when you got grindy after board you got grindy, very 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 grindy. So here we are grinding. Maybe I should have fought over the the thing a little bit more, but I was I was thinking it wasn't gonna live very long because of the Strix. So like. They shuffle. He chose not to shuffle. I mean, I can't block. I don't know why he did this. 
you have like a creature you're gonna play. Okay. Okay. Do they have the World Roger Dragon again? Looks like they do. I mean, I guess. I guess we force it. That's just something we have to force. They're so aggressive with going for it. What if I had a Hydro Blast there? I'm so tilted, chat. I'm so tilted. Alright, we're gonna councils, but we can't beat a Jace. We need help. Back to the holding pattern. Vista. We're gonna hold it. We're holding all these cards in case they have Colgon's command for discard. We're gonna like discard the rip, which is just like a dead card anyway. Okay, well there's the card we couldn't beat. Uh, that's kind of a problem. Ugh. Oh no, chat. Maybe I should have brought in. Maybe I should have brought in Palace Jailer. If I bring in Rest in Peace, bring in Palace Jailer it might just make sense. And like, I have a lot of forces in my deck that just I know aren't going to be very good. There we go. Good one. Hydro Blast. It's not a bad one. Uh. Councils. Vote for Jace. Jace. Alright, we're going to hold the land still. And we're back to the holding pattern. Still behind 50 seconds on time. Waiting for Monastery Venture to come off the top of our library. Make me discard. Kill my Snapcaster Mage. I think I'm okay with that because I have a card I'm willing to discard. Like, I don't think any of these cards matters a whole lot. Whereas I'm much more scared of, like, I don't know, Pyroblasts and cards later when I have my Monastery Mentor. So it's, like, super disciplined to hold that there because Colgan's Command is obviously a two for one, but. Of course it will. Alright, I'm going to play this land fast. Oh, no. Narset. I don't understand how they have so many planeswalkers in their deck. Cast. If we get blasted, we blast back. Oh my gosh. Can't drag spell if it's red. That one. Alright, I don't think they have anything else. If they do, I mean, not like we can do anything about it anyway. We're on a 13 turn clock. So I guess we're just going to hope to draw our walkers before. Hey, that counts! Ah, Jace! Click the brainstorm button. Brainstorm. Hopefully find like a swords or something. Bolt it? Sure. Another Jace. We take those. Alright, there you go. There's that. Go. We're gonna swords the Strix on instep so we can play our Jace peacefully. And I guess we'll Fate Seal. Alright, well now we're gonna swords that. Towards that, and we'll fade to try to protect it from, um, what's it called? Oh no! Now, now it still dies the bolt. We're on a real clock, chat. Oh, I have six through my turn. That's so bad. Dang. I didn't think I double tapped it, but I guess moto lagged. Sure, that might cost me the game. Whatever. It was intentional, obviously. Um, if they have Bolt, how bad is it? I don't know. I'm just going to brainstorm. Well, that's kind of frustrating. So, Teferi can pick up one. I can Fate Seal. We can draw a lot of cards, but I want to fetch away these things. Use two back, play a land, pass the turn. We can hit it to one, and then try to kill it with a Colgon's command, which we have to force negation. That's fine. I have to find like answers to two Strixes. 
Not a ton left on the deck. There's only 24 cards left on our deck. We're also just looking for like monastery mentors. Here's some fetch. Back to back call shots. Yeah. <sighs> How's this deck going? Well, we just started. We're playing against World Gorger Dragon, which isn't a top tier deck. We're down to five minutes on the clock. So I'm trying to play a little bit faster and accidentally F6 through my turn like an idiot. And probably is going to cost me the game because, I mean, it quite literally cost me a brainstorm, right? I'm maybe or maybe not getting access to this Teferi on my next turn, so that's kind of tilting. Yep, there it is. All right. We have to untap this chaser. I think we're dead. Like, we're not going to be able to win. All right, yeah, I have nothing else. Attack it down to one. I don't think I'm supposed to fate seal. Another one? No, there's another command be beating. All right. I I mean, I could fate seal, but that just doesn't seem good enough. This is a pretty critical decision, actually, whether or not to brainstorm or not. I don't have a lot of time to make it, so I'm just going to brainstorm and hope to get there. Oof, we did not get there, Jet. Um, I think there's a basic... Uh, left in my deck, so we're gonna fetch this hunter. Uh, I guess we're just gonna try to mentor with counter spells and hope that gets there. Yeah, countered it. I'm gonna kill Jace, deal one to me, put me to six. I'm gonna have Mentor into Pyroblast. Does do we even race? Oh well, we don't race with Jace. Especially Fate healing me. All right, we're dead. Is that the third Jace? Oh no! How do they have room for three Jaces in this deck? Uh, one, maybe not. Why would you show your hand? I don't care. You've landed in. Jace is a good card. Jace is a good card. We lost to World Gorger Dragon. Deck's unplayable. Pack it in, Jet. Just got mentored. Not good enough. We lost to World Gorger Dragon. All right. Well, this is a keep playing against the field. Not playing against World Gorger Dragon. We'll keep it. All right. Nice, nice choice of basics, opponent. Big fan, big fan. Uh, Tundra sucks. We're gonna fetch an island. Another blue, blue mirror matches. Quite interesting. Yeah, the last match you could definitely argue I did not. I don't know if I want this card or not. You can definitely argue I did not sideboard correctly, but I don't. I don't have a lot of reps in that matchup, and overall, it just doesn't really feel like a very good matchup. And maybe cutting the mentors was wrong. I just really always wanted to draw the mentors, and I had rest in pieces for the enemy dead, so I think cutting the third mentor was a mistake. I just, like, the entire game was, like, kind of ahead, but had a bunch of counter spells. I just really wanted to draw a third mentor. Not being able to. The Hydra Blast landed up, like, a lot better than I expected them to, though. Delver. Sure. I have swords. Good to know that swords is going to line up as well. Eat. Draw. An Astrolabe. We're not going to get our swords dazed, so we're not going to cast it here. Play nice and slow. We no longer know any cards. Let's have our library. And we're going to hope to draw a fourth land. Brainstorm was one of the best draws. Yeah, that's why. We're going to force this because we can't beat it. Pitching force negation because Teferi is good enough, I think. They're going to force back and we're going to die. Okay, they force back. We're in good shape. We may make it after all, chat. Spell snare. I don't even really want to play this land. I'm going to do it anyway. Whatever. It is fine. 
probably going to get this wastelanded, and then their dazes are going to have targets, but it's fine. It's all fine. Everything's fine. I think I wanted to play around double days because we were dead otherwise, and this is going to get spell snared. Hopefully it works. I think we're going to get dazed here instead. I should have floated man, I guess. I suck. Well, I just would have gotten a second main, but still. All right, land, and we're dead. I could probably concede here, but I'll take a draw step. The third mentor in it, Chief. Third, third mentor isn't even very good in this matchup. Like, Monster Mentor against Blue Red Delver, I'm not a huge fan of. We're getting obliterated out here, chat. Deck's unplayable. Another wasteland. I think I, I don't think I've been wastelanded very often either. Yikes. We're so unbelievably done. They cast a cantrip, I will concede. Not often you beat an Arcanist after they, they untap with it. And maybe you can argue I shouldn't have played the Tundra. But I wanted to play around double days. And didn't think they had too many more follow-ups. Like, because they didn't play anything on turn two. They went ahead and just jammed true name on turn three. I didn't think they had another follow-up. And they had the best possible follow-up. Punts. Alright, I do not have Blue-Red Devil in the Cyber Guard. I had Teamer. I thought Blue-Red was dead at the time. It turns out Blue-Red's actually a lot harder to beat than Teamer. Because the re Rest in Peace plan is really bad. So... That was actually one of my problems with the deck, is, like, they are trying to train us more than anything else, which is why, bam, this card is a card I'm looking to see perform here. I, I really, really highly value this card in this matchup, so let's we'll see. We'll see what we can do. I think I'm going to want these. I don't know if I'm going to want this. Probably not. I definitely don't want the main deck back to basics. I definitely want the Council's Judgment. definitely want Pyroblast and Hydroblast. probably all I want. Uh, Verdict's great. I think Jace sucks a lot. They have a lot of bolts and Pyroblast coming in and true names. Like, Jace is just really bad against what they're doing and we're bringing in a lot of four mana cards. I don't really want to have, be stranded on four mana cards. I don't think Force Negation is very good. It doesn't help defend our four mana cards. Uh, Counter Spell is kind of bad too, honestly. I'm probably going to cut that. Just a little clunky. I like the Spell Snare, but I think the Counter Spell is kind of bad once we've sideboarded. I don't love both sinkholes. I'm going to cut at least one. I think one mentor might be a little bad. They just die very easily. We're going to try something like this. This might be nonsense. Like, the second sinkhole might suck. The, honestly, the second, sink, uh, the second sinkhole might be good. We might actually want the other one back. But I'm just going to try out sideboarding like this. Because I don't really know how to sideboard with some of the new cards in our deck. I don't think I want Ensnaring Bridge. Which may make it not good enough in our deck. We're going to keep. Hopefully not get wastelanded. We got enough lands and three drops. It's basically the same hand, except, I don't know, we're on the play. Is Baby Tef good? I think so. I think Baby Tef area is going to be good. It also helps us pick up our moat when we make a bunch of Monastery Venture tokens um, to, like, before we go to kill them. Like, it's going to let us pick up our moat so that we can actually attack. It seems like it has to be better than a lot of the other cards in our deck. Oh, that's big cute. Yeah. Uh, top, 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 shuffle that right now. We don't have any removal spells, so we're a little weak to a turn one Delver. And a turn two, what's it called? But we have Brainstorm and Ponder next turn to find a, a removal spell. So actually the turn two Arcanist I'm less worried about. It's the turn one Delver that might beat us. Yeah, if this thing flips, we're, we're in pretty big trouble, I think. Surgical Extraction, Prismatic Vista. You got it, buddy. I do not care. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy, because with this updated information, I wanted the Brainstorm and didn't want any of the other cards, so this Shuffle effect is actually very, very convenient. They did remove four lands from our deck, though, which kind of sucks. Or three lands from our deck. So we're less likely to hit a land to, like, get rid of. Oh, there's the swords. Um... 
I guess we just hold the brainstorm then, right? Mm, I'm just not really that scared of this Delver. Maybe I'm we'll, Because, like, I was planning on spending my entire turn trying to, like, get rid of it. Let's just brainstorm. I want to see how our mana plays out. Well... We have a lot of three drops to jam and not a lot of good ways to do it. I definitely don't want the second mentor. I think I'm gonna put another three drop back and I don't know what the worst three drop out of these are. This being able to pick up a creature is nice. This being able to find things is nice. It just makes me think mentor is probably the worst. I think mentor is the worst. All right. And honestly, I may just redraw it. Like if I don't have to cast this spell snare, then I may just redraw the mentor. Brainstorm. You're aggressive, buddy. You are very aggressive. Bring it. You got surgicals. Your brainstorm in response to your delver. Do not believe my opponent is very, very proficient with delver, but we may just lose anyway. What you got? Preordain seems fine to me. I'm gonna take my take my three. I think because we want to draw land, we're not we're gonna fetch away. Oh yeah. Well now we definitely are. Cause their second land is a wasteland. Right. Don't care. Snow covered plains. Land? We drew a mentor anyway. There's a moto bug and a half. Hmm. Towards that. We're gonna tap right and pass. Now they have no clock. They may have true name, which would be bad. We can't counter that. They're probably looking for a land for true name. Them is what this means, because like, what else is their hand doing? If they keep, don't shuffle, play land and pass. Like if they don't have like a two drop or something to play, then I'm definitely gonna put them on a true name hand. I think opponent just played out with surgical nut. <laughs> I just beat my chest with files to play fair. What do they do? They choose not to shuffle and they cast. They, yeah, they, they put the land in play and are casting their preordain. So I guess they wanted the land and nothing else. It's probably on the bottom, like one or two of these. One on top, one on bottom. Sure. Sure. Astrolabe. Let's pocket first. Um. Yeah, sure. We'll shuffle it. Well, that verdict's nice. It ensures us against a uh, a true name as long as we draw lands. But like I said, they they did remove some lands from our hand. That's fine. I don't really care that much about our Ashley getting countered. And I'm actually glad they picked up a land because it means we're not getting true named. We may get Arcanist, though. Nope, not getting Arcanisted. Not getting Arcanisted. Their hand's kind of slow. I don't know. Like, we have five cards in their four, about to be going to six. Again, getting the impression their hand's just not very good. And now that Force Will actually improves our hand quality a lot. Like, we're set up to grind, and that's a bad use of Brainstorm. I think because they've used misused their Brainstorms, we're going to win this game. And that's like a big, that's a big part of legacy is using your brainstorms right. Like, I don't think fetching on instep, they do have a delta, so they get to fetch away one. Yeah, see so ya. Yeah, get rid of that. If they blast back, we're going to force it. Pitching probably to fairy. I think Norse, that's a little bit better. Yep. Okay. Here's the blast. Expected the blast. Force that. Not gonna pitch the verdict. It's between the Teferi and the Narset. Uh, I don't have the impression the Teferi is worse against blue red. All right, we have three cards there too. Drew a four drop. Nice. Now we're definitely very weak to a true name nemesis. 
which they do not have yet. That's nice. Ponder. This will probably get countered. Yep. Oh, they're just going to try to, like, exchange their, like, expiring counter spells for, like, trying to keep us off hitting our land drops and draw a threat. That's a threat. It's not a very good threat, but it's a threat. Land, the first land of two is good. I don't have Prismatic Vista, so the things that actually fetch planes... This is actually worth considering, because we don't have very many things that fetch planes anymore. I'm not actually sure I can fetch and play this Narset if I want to cast either of these two cards. I think I actually have to grab a second white source and play this. Because if we look, like I have a lot of double white cards. I only have two astrolabes left and I have four snow covered islands as well as two scalding turns to fetch them. Whereas I have no prismatic vistas to fetch this planes. So I think this is like a spot where we have to actually consider the fact that like those prismatic vistas are surgical and just grab this planes. Mentor. Probably going to get dazed or something. I don't know. Bolted. Whatever. The last card in hand probably answers this because they haven't had a chance to bolt anything yet. I would I would expect to see this get bolted. If it does not, we're in pretty good shape. But They drew a non-land. Oh, it looks like it was a land on top thing that they're fetching here. Another Delver. That's reasonable. Dang. The second Delver is frustrating because it means I'm incentivized to Supreme Verdict. Oh, wow. Well, we just drew it all, all the time. Um, fetch. And we're going to cast Narset here. Plays around days. And, um, gets our, like, monks going here. This, it does punish us if they flip their Delvers. Yeah, we'll take a, we'll take a Council's Judgment. Council's Judgment, there's a universe now where we don't Supreme Verdict. Like, I want them to commit more things to the board. I don't think they will. If these Delver Slip, we're just in big trouble. Ugh, dang. And they have Pyroblast. That's frustrating. Because now they get to kill Narset. We did get a card out of it, but they get to kill Narset. Things did not line up our way. Needed them to whiff for a turn. They didn't, which is fine. They have a lot of spells, but the upside was really high. Brainstorm. Yeah, I don't think we race well, so I'm just going to attack. Well, do we? If this Councils works, they have Pyroblast in their hand. If this Councils goes through, like if we don't Verdict and the Councils goes through, then we attack for 5, which puts them to 11, and then we have a Brainstorm to make another token and make more stuff. But the Palace Jailer upside's really high. Yeah, I think I'm just going to attack, and I'm going to... They only have two cards. We know one of them is Pyroblast. I think I'm just going to attack, and then I'm going to try to Palace Jailer them. Yeah, we'll just Supreme Verdict. It's really tempting to, like, not... What's up? The token will come in as a 2-2. Two -two. Day's Bolt. It's always a 1-1. One -one. Eat. Young Pyromancer. That's a good one. They have Pyroblast. So I assume they're just going to try to make a 1-1. One -one. We have Force. Do you think they have a second spell chat? What do we think? I'm going to be conservative. All right. this is That was really, really disciplined. Because they can like make some tokens and stuff like that. And it's really tempting to Palace Jailer it. I'm just going to hope they draw like an Arcanist or something. Or nothing. I hope they draw nothing. Here's, here's this thing. They have force. We can force back, and that puts them to only Pyroblast in hand. And then they Pyroblast, and we have swords to their nothing, so I think we just let this happen. Like, we know about Pyroblast. I want to take draw steps and try to beat it. No true name? Arcanist. All right. Well, there's the Arcanist I was hoping for. Another Palace Jailer! Right here. Ding. Dicks. Swords it. Lame. 
the question of whether or not to brainstorm here is an interesting one. Like, we know they have Fire Blast in hand. They've had a lot of threats. Wow. Blue card. All right. All right. Brainstorm. Expect them to Fire Blast this. And then our Narset's going to stick. Get got. Boop. All right. Narset. In before another Blast, right? They have a bunch of bolts in their deck. We're still getting a card out of this. Ooh, Astrolabe. Fix my mana, daddy. All right. Daze it. You won't. Ooh, and we have Force Up. We're so lucky, chat. And all their cantrips are turned off if they don't have, like, a bolt. Or another Pyroblast, which is Venthyr 2. I don't know how many they have in their deck, but their cantrips being turned off is actually super, super relevant. Give me another card. Greedy, 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 greedy. I'll take Teferi. Uh, sure, I'll play this. Boop. 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 Here's Teferi. Ooh, it worked, chat. Minus, pick this up. Palace Jailer, ooh, ooh. All right, I think we've run away with this game. We have multiple walkers now that they need to answer. We have counter spells that they can't counter back, and we're just in good shape. So we die to nothing, unless they kill this and play Journey. They have to kill this first, then play Journey, which is kind of a big ask out of their deck. Uh, sure, plus this up. Play a land. And like I said, what I think cost them a lot of this game was the way they use their brainstorms. We'll get Monarch. Oh, I don't care. There you go. Become the Monarch. Go to instep. We have Force plus Pyroblast to cover true names, which is the only thing I think we lose to. And the game is over. Look at this Palace Jailer. Palace Jailer on an empty board is unfreaking beatable. Unbeatable. Uh, on instep, I think I'm going to ponder. Uh, top, top. Yeah, I'll take both of these. Draw. I don't know why they're thinking of my upkeep. They can't make any moves. This deck is kind of gross. Yeah, when it works, it's kind of gross. I was kind of worried. Like, we missed a bunch of land drops throughout the course of this game. All right, let's fetch. Go to eight. Am I worried about dying to bolts? Not really. I'm going to play all my lands because I want to be able to hold up Hardcast Force and all kinds of stuff like that. Like, I want to be able to use all my mana, and we have Monarch running, so I'm not really worried about Brainstorm usage. I'm much more worried about, like, dying to a flurry of bolts or something like that. Because I think that's the only way we get punked out of this game. Ponder, that's fine. Like I said, if it's not a true name nemesis or, like, yeah, if it's not, like, a true name nemesis, I just don't care. Or like a lethal lightning bolt. There's a lot of things I do not care about. Oh yeah, yeah there's also Narset in play. I considered countering that. That's embarrassing. Plus this up. This would be so much faster to do in paper. I almost want to flash the Snapcaster in just to attack. Alright, in step. I probably will here in a second. Because I'm at 7 cards now and I need to like empty my hand. We'll just like snap a brainstorm and in step or something. What is this? A true name? Yeah, that's that card. Remember that card that I said we counter? Yeah, that one. See ya. Where are you going? Where are you going? My opponent has correctly identified that their only out was also Snapcaster Mage. I mean, I'm sorry. The stupid card they were casting. True name notices. God, words are hard. <sighs> All right. Any of this we want back? This card hate. I hate this card. This card's so bad. It's not that bad. Didn't draw moat. Would like to draw moat. Um, hmm. All the blasts were good. The spell snare lined up. Is the spell snare worse than a, a magmatic sinkhole? That's a real question. Especially if they're like surgicaling me, or like, any, do I like take any considerations of the fact they're surgicaling me and they're trying to play more aggressive with their brainstorms, and not really trying to grind? Does that make me change my opinion on any of these cards? I don't think so. 
Wind Palace Shield is good. It's unbelievably good. Such a gross card. Yeah, Monarch is busted. Monarch is a stupid mechanic. Why White has, like, a better Planeswalker is beyond me. Just absolutely beyond me. This card is, yeah, it is very, very, very good. It, it, it's, it was the overperformer of the weekend. I was just, yeah. Ensnaring Bridge. Don't like Ensnaring Bridge. Don't like Jace. I'm considering some kind of, like, Spell Snare Magmatic Sinkhole swap. Right now, yeah, if it, that's too much thinking. Let's click some it. Did you make fun of me for instep ponder shadows? What do you mean? I did it. You just used to fairy. It's great. Do you have a moat I can borrow this weekend? I do not have an extra moat. Uh, this hand's great. Why we've had Mentor in our opening hands every game is beyond me. The card is not very good in this matchup, and I only have two of them in my deck for a reason. They leering on Ponder makes me think they have a two-mana threat, so we should be trying to find a Swords off of this Ponder, which is something we were kind of trying to do anyway, but... What are the chances are Vistas get surgical again, chat? What are the chances? They also might think I was Miracles, which is that I brought in Surgical. Like, I don't have Terminus in my deck, and they might think I do. Uh, ugh. I really want these cards, especially that one, but none of those are land. Oh, that is. It's actually the land we want to, because we want to cancel gas. They saw your deck? They saw my deck after they chaliced. I'm talking about why they brought in chalice to begin with. Here's their two-mana threat, most likely a uh, five-head, whatever his name is, Arcanist. <gasps> we didn't get Arcanist! We have a chance, chat! We have a chance! this. What are the chances they try to counter this? Because I would not mind the mana fixing. <laughs> I actually am a little upset if this gets countered. It did not. I'm lucky. Multiple Narsets and Severi and stuff. Okay. Maybe I should have, like, tried to get it dazed. Instep Brainstorm. My opponent's a big fan of this whole Instep Brainstorm idea. Big fan. Big fan. They subscribe to the instep brainstorm. If there's a true name nemesis here, it's a little frustrating, but it's not too bad. We can beat it. Arcanist. Do we bait with a brainstorm? Sure. Let's try to bait out a pyroblast. Though I don't think they will. Ooh, Verdict's nice. Hmm. They're probably going to get a card off this, which sucks. Is the fairy better than Narset? I think so. Okay. I'm probably going to still go for the councils next turn, even though it's almost certainly not going to work. The upside of it working is just so high. So we're going to go for it. Council's judgment. So Pierce. Yep. Nope. And we're probably dead. Arcanus is a tough one to beat. Two Arcanists? Oh, well now we just need to find any land, because we have Supreme Verdict. This is a gross interaction, though, because they're going to get uh, tokens, too. Surgical Extraction targeting what? Brainstorm? Excellent. Glad they didn't target Ponder. Oh, wait. No, they can. Fuck. That still lets me shuffle. Okay, never mind. I don't care that much. I only care about drawing a land next turn. So if they flashback Surgical, it's actually pretty good for me. Because we have Supreme Verdict. Got him. Oh, I got to shuffle anyway. Okay, never mind. I, I care a lot now. Hopefully the flashback can cantrip. Damn it. All right, we'll take my ponder. Don't really care that much if they take my ponder. We're still just looking for a land. And if we miss, we're just going to cast it to fairy. But it is unfortunate how things played out. Although I guess I'm more happy, probably more happy with this than a cantrip. Because if we spike the land, then them not going up a card was really relevant. Because like we can, we still have card advantage over them. Land? Ding. Oh, yeah. 
That sweet, sweet punishment. Get that crap out of my face. See ya. Gah. What's up, nubs? How goes it? How do you like that? Good, good. Oh, instep brainstorm. Heads up play. Heads up play from opponent. What are they doing? They're just casting these brainstorms at random. Untap. <laughs> Draw. Oh, let's get this land. The old one of verdict. Yeah, no shit. That was, that was very impressive. All right, Vista, that's a fine pickup. We're gonna play it to play around Spell Pierce, and then we're gonna play our Narset. I think, yeah, we're gonna play our Narset. I wanna try to find a cantrip so I can mentor cantrip. This is probably just getting countered, realistically. Like, they probably have a bunch of, uh, like with their three cards in hand, it's probably just a bunch of counter magic. It's obviously not threats, it's obviously not lands. So, it's, what is this gonna be, right? It's gonna be like, things that it says. Force of Will pitching Spell Snare, I will take it. We take those. Mm, I guess next turn we play Mentor. I don't know. I don't even know. The world's my oyster. Nah, we'll play Teferi. Teferi. Pick up Astrolabe. Cast Astrolabe. We could wait for Mentor. Don't want to. Two Mentors. We're just going to like... I just want to draw more cards. Just like lock in the card advantage immediately. Make sure we stay ahead. What is this? A bolt? Deal. Remember the part about locking in card advantage? Yeah, that was a three for one. Yeet. Sinkhole. Mm hmm. I see. Kind of just want to play two monastery mentors. Since they use their lightning bolt now, I think we should play two monastery mentors. Which feels kind of insane to me. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I might play a mentor to Teferi. I bet I'll do that. Here's a mentor. Boop, boop, boop. Here's Teferi. Yeah. And then we'll pick up the Ashley again. No! They're countering it. Darn. One is enough. Don't be crazy. Look, I just want to, like, end this game. Like, I don't want to get your name out of this game. What are you doing? What do you have for four mana? Oh, a Magmatic Sinkle? Deal. We definitely take those. All right, we're going to pick up Ashley again. Yeet. A Force? All right, cool. And then we get to go Minter Astrolabe next turn? Nut, chat. Nut. Arcanist? Okay, never mind. We have to kill the Arcanist. Oh, wait, no, we get to do that, too. Okay, never mind. We just get to do everything. This game is squarely over. All right. Here you go. Here's a mentor. All right. Let's get this out of my face. One, two, three, four, and... What do I don't want you to surgical? There's one Narset left in my deck, so we'll just take that. All right. Move that out of my face, please. Where are you going? Fine, I was going to kill you with some mentors, but yeah, my opponent correctly assessed that that game was over. I don't think we had a chance in that game if my opponent uses their brainstorms reasonably, which is frustrating, but we, in fact, managed to pull it out. This one looks close. <laughs> I'm here to provide all of your nut needs. Well, thank you. What are it over? Then you QQ when they concede? Well, I wanted to kill them. I wanted to make my tokens. I earned those tokens, Cheesehead. I earned them. I earned those Monastery Mentor tokens. I had an Astrolabe to cast. I had, like, I should just cast the Astrolabe first. Just, like, made more tokens. Because I earned those tokens. Those are my tokens, she said. I, I don't know how I could make this. If I put it ahead and spewed those Surgicals and Brainstorms, we die. That's exactly what I'm talking about, Seraph. Seraphix. I think we were dead as crap. And that matchup is very hard. So, like, that shows that there is some skill to be had, like, in when you're playing these games. Is, like... If they didn't screw up those brainstorms, I think they win that game. Whereas, like, as it stood, like, we managed to, like, use our, like, line our cards up well with theirs because they weren't using their resources efficiently and win the game. So, like, games of magic, you play bad, you lose. It's part of why Legacy's great. Keep. Condescend. Are they on Mono Blue Tron? 
What you doing? So Drake, you're telling me you don't cast brainstorms like ops? I do not. I do not. I did. I did one though. I, I brainstormed in response to that uh, arcanist, that first arcanist. All right. Uh, how do I want to fetch here? This grabs snow-covered plains, but this doesn't. But we have a red card we want to cast this game. We also have white cards. This just informs it the best because we definitely want an island, and we're more likely to want the island than the the mountain. Okay, or we could just have a million lands. Do we just, like, keep this and hope I don't need Force of Will in whatever matchup this is? Because this is, like, set up to grind, and I really want another land. It's kind of greedy to shuffle this, but, like, Teferi's great. I'm just going to top all this crap. Do I want two lands? I can snap Ponder under three. No. We're just going to hope Force of Will doesn't matter. If it does, then we're dead. If this is a combo matchup, we're probably very, very dead. Snow-covered island. Hey, look at this. I'm a genius. It's like probably a mirror. And in the mirror, the fairies are the most relevant cards. So we're just gods. We're so good at this game. Yeet. Uh, play this. Yes. All right, we're going to need a little more info. We can still fetch the Teferi away if we need to. Get a little bit more info about what's going on here. This is like Blackland Strix that we have to like consider our lives. I want the Teferi. I have decided I want the Teferi. We're going to jam a Teferi because we have two. It's probably going to get countered. Brainstorm. Deal. <laughs> We have Sinkhole to cover there. Turn three plays, which is very nice. No! Do you have a counter spell? Are you kidding me? What is this? Spell Pierce? Oh, that's so gross. Oh, you're just going to fetch and force it? I'm much happier with that. Force pitching brainstorm. We take those. We take the, we take the forces. Now we are even on cards because they forced. And they're going to play their three drop, which is probably going to be like a mentor or something. Maybe a Teferi. That's fine. So this turn is going to be kind of sicko. Because we get to fetch the mountain. And we get to uh, mentor plus magmatic sinkhole. So that's pretty good. Boop. Mentor. Oh, they're F6. Okay. Oh, well, that's nice. Check out me lining my plays up well. Because I have played the mirror for some ungodly reason. Kill that. Your turn. Oh, look at that, chat. Everything just lines up cleanly. Teferi is broken. Teferi is, in fact, broken. Here comes a Snapcaster on Brainstorm. Probably Brainstorm. Because their hand sucks. Okay. Put back two lands. Their, I imagine their hand was very bad. Swords, my mentor. Yup. Still got a token out of it. Swords, so we can Teferi pass. Teferi plus, but Teferi plus. Teferi plus. I guess we just pass. I'm willing to like try to hold this Snapcaster at bay. And if they play like a Jace or something, that's really unfortunate, but. Because they could chase bounce attack, and that's just like really rough. Because we are far from snap casting the sinkhole. We need some cantrips for that. They also might just have the uh, sinkhole of their own, but they don't have red. Oh my god, they actually have the Jace? That's so good. Perhaps I did screw this up then. Alright, okay. So we can Swords, Ponder, Snap, Ponder, and that's not bad. Let's lead on the Ponder and see if we can have a better turn. Our own Jace. That's a better turn, I think. Uh, What cards do we want? So we get to Brainstorm first. To be the first one to brainstorm, the counter spell doesn't seem great. 
Uh, we already have a land to play, so we don't need a land. Top, top. I guess it doesn't really matter. Top. No, Teferi is going to probably save us here. Jace. Brainstorm. Astrolabe, Counterspell. Um, it doesn't really matter what we keep in hand. I want to consider fetching away this Counterspell because the Counterspells don't matter if they don't have Counterspells. So. We have Swords, Snap Ponder, we got all kinds of stuff. Alright, so typical flare of blue mirroring. That's what we're doing. This looks like I'm enter plus a cantrip. Yep. We have swords, snap swords, so we're not too worried about this. Yep. Brainstorm scary. So we can we also have like planeswalkers to use. Oh that's bad. They didn't grab red, which is good. Oh, that's bad. Now we're dead. Tilt. All right. Okay, now we need the main deck verdict. I feel incentivized to just swords snap sinkhole. There's only three cards in the graveyard. So let's plus this up. Cast Snapcaster Mage. Target Magmatic Sinkhole. Okay. I guess we want a Swords first. Swords that. Sinkhole that. Cancel. Uh, this. Hmm. I guess we can just delve it all out and then play our Astrolabe. Yeah, let's just delve it all out and actually cast the Astrolabe this turn. That way, if they draw a Narset, we're not just like stone dead to it. Alright, yeah, I do too. Oh, geez, another Jace. All right, now we're done. Now we're very dead. God, they drew insane. Teferi, Mentor, the Sinkhole, and two Jaces, like both Jaces in the deck. It's going to be hard to beat. Because we played and snapped the Sinkhole. All right, we have to draw, like, Sinkhole into Verdict. That ain't it. That ain't it. Ugh. Dang, I thought we I thought we lined our cards up great. Like I had a plan for their turn three play and just like in general felt like I kinda had an idea what's going on and then we just got got. Ugh. Alright. So we want pyroblasts. God, we've been battling back. I think we've lost every single game one. <laughs> we've just been battling back all league. It's hard out here. Get this out of my deck. Is this good? They don't know it. it's coming. It makes the palace jailers a little better. Palace Jailer's a complicated card because you always want to be the second player to play your Palace Jailer. Um, Weird Chair is not great. All these other cards are kind of bad. Uh, Swords is kind of bad. We can kind of like do them. Or does I actually think the counter spells are okay? Ugh. Spell Snare is really bad, right? There's like very few two drops we actually care about. It's like only Snapcaster Mage. Got like one force negation. Is that insane? I don't like the moat very much. I don't like swords very much. Just hope not to die to mentor or draw the main deck supreme verdict. Is the moat better than the supreme verdict? That's the real question. Is moat better than supreme verdict? I don't think so because they can they can just bounce it with the fairy or whatever. If this deck is going to be popular, do you think you should board more control cards? No. I think the, like, Palace Jailers and all that crap we have going on is already almost too much. Like, look at this. Look at our hand. Like, I don't think we have too many cards for control. The mirror is just the mirror. Don't ever... This is just a, le a lesson in magic. Don't ever prepare for mirrors. Mirror matches, even if you hedge your deck insanely for the mirror, you're probably going to get, like, a 5 to 10% edge in the mirror. Like, 
don't. You can just do so much more with your other slots to improve other matchups. Whereas, like, the mirror matchups are just always going to be kind of a coin toss. Just hope that your mirror match is skill intensive and that you can win, or you can win the die roll or something. Like, there's uh, trying to prepare for mirror matches is always, I think, a mistake. There, you, there can be some considerations, like, for instance, a swing vote for a card that you're trying to put in your sideboard may be that it's good in the mirror, but that would be because, like, that would be because the card you want it for other reasons, and it's just like a swing vote, like I said. It's just like, you're not something that you're primarily thinking, like, I'm playing this for the mirror. You're instead thinking, I want this card because it's good here, 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 and it's, and it's another card to bring it in the mirror. Uh, Sure. So, that is my take. Joe Lissette hedged for mirrors when he played Legends of Miracles and he crushed everyone. But, like, it wasn't just better in the mirror. Like, the clicks and vencers and stuff like that were also better in, like, the sneak and show matchup. And, like, I think the storm matchup. Like, he just hedged. Like, they were good in other spots and cards that he was more familiar with. And in general, not as many people succeeded with Jolisette's deck. But overall, I think Jolisette's reason for playing those cards isn't because they were good in the mirror. The reason he played Cavern was because it was good in the mirror, but it also was good in other spots. Um, There's a lot of Snapcaster Mages. Uh, yeah, what the fuck? Fetch. Cover cleans. Let's untap. Force of will. That makes me want to jam this mentor. The fact that I drew a force of will makes me want to jam this mentor. So I'm going to. <laughs> Force, pitching, force, negation. Well, our hand's have plenty of other good cards, so I'm actually going to hold the force. Like, we didn't have that much to do with the mentor, so I'm fine with it being a three-man him to Torok. If they play Teferi here, I'm not going to force it. No, I think I am, actually. I'm probably forcing anything that's three-man armor. Arkham's Astralabe. I think they have a blast here. Which maybe is a reason to actually just play Astrolabe and set up the Palace Jailer. Because I don't want to get... Like, the fact they played this on turn one makes you think they just have Hydroblast or a Pyroblast. And I really don't want to get Pyroblasted. So... I'm going to play Arkham's Astrolabe. We're going to play We're gonna play this really slow. And nice and conservative-like. And hope not to get got because of it. All right, and then now we're going to play in the Snap Brainstorm now that we have something better to pitch to Force. Four mana. Monastery Mentor. All right, this is where their Pyroblast is going to come in. Force Pitch Ponder. And if they, if they Pyroblast here, I'm going to Snap Brainstorm. All right, I think I'm still going to Snap Brainstorm, actually. Instep? Yeah, we'll do it on instep. It helps pressure planeswalkers. It locks in a two for one. And I want another creature. Ugh. I want another creature to help protect from Palace Jailer, because we're just gonna jam a Palace Jailer here. Um Sure, whatever. They probably took out their back to basics. I'm gonna hope they did at least. Palace Jailer. This is a little aggressive, but I have a second creature. So the fact that I have a second creature makes me think that I can beat with this Jace the Mind Sculptor. I can beat their Palace Jailer. And that makes me more willing to be the first person to jam a Palace Jailer. This might be a mistake. I haven't played a bunch with the Palace Jailer mirrors, but I think it's correct. Because if they jam Palace Jailer, they exile like Snapcaster Major or whatever. We Jace, Bounce... And then cast, oh, well, we're just going to try to blast that. See ya. Uh, we're going to Jace bounce and then attack. Spell Pierce, gross. All right. So you have to brainstorm? Oh, no, you just fade seal. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. 
Um, so now we fetch player to fairy, pick up our snapcaster, snap blast. Seems good to me. Eats to fairy. Um, I guess we're supposed to go combat first. All right, fine. Attack you, attack you. All right, now we pick up our Snapcaster Mage. Ooh, oh, geez, tapping for mana is so hard. Snapcaster Mage, target Pyroblast. Pyroblast that. Go to Instep and Mentor. Yeet, or Monarch. Got him. What you got? Ooh, an arse, that's a good one. Minusing it is sketchy. Not super concerned about it. Power Blast. So that kills that. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Snap Gesture Mage. What does that do? Nothing. So let's just plus it up. Let's play our own Narset and see what we can see. Hopefully an answer to Narset. We did not. That's okay. Um, we're gonna fate seal them. Island. Chase. Planes, walkers. Fate seal you. Put it on bottom. No. Combat, attack Narset. And then we are prevented from drawing a card due to the Narset, which is unfortunate. Oh, they have their own Teferi. That's a good one. Well, they can't draw a card either. So I guess they just pick up my Palace Jailer? Sure. <laughs> they just conceded because they can't draw a card to Narset. All right, cool. I guess we played that one out. Um, all right, we take those. We definitely take those. Back to the question of is Force of Negation slash Spell Snare better than Swords to Plowshares? I don't know. If we're Palace Jailering people, then maybe it's not. We're just going to run it back. We're just going to run it back. Hey, the man with a plan. You have a plan? Apologies since you probably answered it before, but do you have views on Jerry's list? Green for Quaddle and Cyborg Veil, among other things. <laughs> Dom, I did not answer it. I think if I was going to go green, I talked to Zach Allen about this. If I, if I was going to go green, I'd want to play like Ren and Sex. Like that's the primary reason to go green, I think, is we get to play Ren and Sex. I don't think I want Sideboard Tarnwife that much. Like if we're playing a Mentor deck, right, then our deck's going to be filled with mostly Instant and Sorceries. Also, we're like a Rest in Peace deck, and that's part of our primary game playing against Rug. I just like don't think Tarmogoyf adds anything to our deck. Like, our combo matchup already has a quick clock as well as impactful prison pieces and good interaction. And so I haven't found our combo matchups to be the ones that are hard. The hard matchups I've found have been to be, like, the true name decks. So, like, the Blue Red Delver deck felt really hard, and the Teamer Delver was, like, 50-50-ish. And so those are the matchups I would be looking to improve. And I think Red and Six being able to grind helps with that. So if I was going to play green, I think I'd play that. Uh, he's going to draw great. Keep. Hopefully we can draw a second out. So that we can counterspell on turn three. Island. Island, 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 island. Dilt. All right, we're going to play the strictly best ponder first. Ponder. Looking for an island. Any island effect. That is an island effect. We will top. Actually, these are also, like, good cards, too. That was a good ponder. All right. God, this league is taking forever. We've been like two hours into it. All right. And then we're going to play our Flooded Strand and decide if we want to get rid of our... Are you going to jam? They are going to jam. Exciting. Train. Choo. I agree Blue Red is strong against Mentor decks. It's not an easy matchup, but I can definitely get ahead. Update my experience is only playing one match in the Classic. Um, the problem is they just have a million true names. That was the problem I found. Okay. 
we're just not gonna make a move. All right, I'm down to take draw steps. I think. I think. I think I'm down to take draw steps. I think it's good. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm down to take draw steps. I'm gonna brainstorm an in step. Assess how much I actually want this monastery mentor. They're gonna do stuff. Ooh, they're moving. All right, yeah. Fetch. Uh, tundra. Can't respond. Can't respond. They force. That's good for us because we're just gonna fight this on a one for one axis. Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. Actually, I might just play monastery mentor and then untap council's judgment. Might just do that. That opens me up to getting palace jailer though, and I'm not in love with that. Although I might just get palace jailer anyway. Hmm. Force of negation. Interesting. Yeah, this makes you want to play Monastery Mentor. Um, it's really tough to make this decision on whether or not I want to counsel his judgment. I don't think I do. They're going to force it? Jeez, man. All right. They still have a force negation, too. Okay. I guess I'm cool with this. They're just gonna force everything I do. They might just die because they have more cards. It's very possible. Very, very possible. Hmm. Gosh, that force will is interesting. And they still we know we still know force negation is one of their three cards. They're gonna pick up another card to pitch. And then Exile and Council Judgment is actually kind of a disaster. So we have to, like, snap Caster Mage. How does this deck do against Depths? It's fine. I think it's about 50-50. That's another match I wouldn't mind improving, which is part of why I have an Ensnaring Bridge on my sideboard. Is like, originally I had a Celestial Purge, and I was hoping that was enough. But, like, you really just don't have enough answers to a Merit Lage, honestly, with, like, Sword Splashers and stuff like that. And, like, you have... A lot of the enchantments are good, but they have a lot of Abrupt Decays, so, like... A lot of times your stuff gets dislodged, and your clock isn't that fast, and their fair plan is also pretty good against you. The match is worse than you think it is. Brainstorm, sure. All right. So they have hard cast force negation up. Uh, I think I want to just. What do I want to do? I can play a Palace Jailer. I don't think that's very good. So I think I'm going to instep a Snapcaster Mage. Try to untap and Council's Judgment. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And like we have Snap Counter Spell up, so if they make a move, we can just like actually get a spell out of it too. Whereas like right now we're just kind of at this like parody moment. Snapcaster Mage. Ooh, Pyroblast is a good one. Snow Covered Island. They still have hard cast force negation up, so I guess we're just gonna play a creature and hope they can't answer it. Which this makes me think they maybe have swords. Hmm. Could use a Narset. Could use a Narset. Or Nashley, but we don't have red mana. That's frustrating. If they have their own palace shield, they will concede. Okay, that's fine. Oh, the plusing? Sure. They have Sinkle? Kill Narset. Hope it works. It did. Excellent. All right. Um, I don't know if they have force negation, but let's find out. It's going to inform the rest of our turn.
All right, they, or I'm sorry, I knew they had force negation. I didn't know if they had a blue card. That was what I was referring to. Anyways. Ponder. Blast. Okay. I mean. Okay. I guess I'll just draw my card. It's another countless judgment. I mean, that, that countering that ponder seems really loose. I don't know what they could have. Maybe they have a, their own palace jailer still? Gideon. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's also fine. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Gideon, I think, is in general worse than Palace Jailer, but we're about to find out, aren't we? Because we probably have to counsels it. But I also want to get rid of this to fairy. But if we can find like land blast, then we're in very good shape. So let's just brainstorm. Jace. Jace is big game. Interesting. So we can get rid of the fairy. They get the monarch back. We get it back again. We have five, six, seven. Or we can play Jace. They pick it up, hit me with Gideon. And that's bad. Or they attack with Gideon. I block. And we're in rough shape. It's, I'm trying to find a universe where we don't cast... Well, we can't use counter spells, so I don't think we're. There's a universe where we're taking Teferi out, so let's put the counter spells back. Okay. We're mana short from being able to Jace bounce a token. Is bridge better than second purge? I don't even think the first purge is good. The first purge is what I cut, actually. Um. It's a very interesting position. So we can Jace. Bounce the knight. Attack Gideon. Where does that leave us? Leaves us in an okay spot. What if we just got rid of Gideon? They bounce this, they get Monarch. Is that the end of the world? I don't think so. I think we want to get rid of this still. The fact we're drawing to a third card path to exile makes me also want to cash this brainstorm in. Let's brainstorm. Hmm. Always a mana short. Well, I want to make them bounce my palace jailer, so we'll just pass. And I drew a card. Mentor. All right, yeah, that's bad. You have, you have a thing too? All right, yeah, that's pretty bad. So if they block, what do we do? Picked up my palace jailer. They're gonna get monarch back. All right, cool. Palace jailer. Target mentor. Um, get the monarch back. To fairy. Is three pick the monk up they land and ship and draw a card all right well this has been an interesting game not normally you're not passing this back and forth they're trying to find an answer to the palace jailer that's reasonable this is why you leave source of flashes in your deck I guess God, we need to find a way to get this Teferi off the table Another mentor? Oh, that's a problem. 
I don't know why I'm like holding up stuff. I just I can't move. I'm like interested to see if they're gonna pick my jailer back up. Probably will because they got a mentor back. But them cashing out to fairy means that I get counter spells again. All right. Yep. Okay. You can have it back. Supreme verdict. Is that still in my deck? It is. Interesting. Very interesting, chat. Very interesting. So we're going to plus this up no matter what. We're going to fetch a red source no matter what. I think we're just Jailer Mentor. I mean, Jailer Jace. What if we Jailer Jace? I save it in time for the game. <laughs> I really don't like them playing Potter instead of sacking Teferi to get Minter back first. Yeah, that was pretty loose, right? Oh, but they didn't want me to, like, counterspell it, maybe. I don't know. They have four cards in the end to our six. We really just need to find an answer to these stupid Mentors. Which involves... What does it involve? It involves killing off these stupid things. Maybe Like, I don't think we're going to win the long game against a bunch of Mentors. So we need to, like, pick one up, answer the other one. Maybe we like pick up a token, answer a mentor, and block, plan the block. If we ponder into Supreme Verdict, we can do it on their turn, but they have the Monarch. We have forces. I really just want the Monarch back, so I'm going to try to get it back. Jailer. All right, we're going to exile one of these, get the Monarch back, and we can Jace Bounce, and that puts me able to, like, block, or we can Jace Bounce the Mentor and force it on the way back down. I think I like that a little bit more. Jace. Hey, F711, I really appreciate the follow. Sorry, I'm kind of deep in the tank, and we are low on time, so we are, like, trying to figure this out. All right. Draw a card, hopefully it's blue. Swords to plowshares, oh, that's big. That's really big. Okay, we're gonna force pitching, force of negation. And they can't force back, so we have Teferi. They have another one? There's no way they have the third one, right? What is this? Teferi? Oh, jeez. All right, well, the swords is going to help, especially if they pick up Jailer again. What are you picking up? Oh, my God, stop it. And they get to kill one of my walkers. They get to kill Jace. That's so gross. But I think we stabilize here because of the swords, because we have Teferi still in play. Yep. All right. Ugh. Let's ponder first. Ponder first, another Jailer and a Monastery Mentor. I think we want the Mentor. So how much mana do we have access to this turn? Uh, eight, so we want to, yeah, we want all this. Top, 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 no. Um, plus up, because it's all I can do. Sure, here's a Monastery Mentor. Here is a Swords to Plowshares. Oh my gosh. This this game has been exhausting. Oh, I don't think I have another White Source in my deck. Oh no, chat. I just fucked it all up. Uh-huh. Alright, well, tilt. Yeah, I need to play this. I'm so bad, chat. We're gonna get an extra card now. I guess we can snap sword something. Hmm. Ugh, I feel like such a forehead. Whatever, I'm just gonna snap a ponder, actually. Ponder. 
Do they have five cards in hand? That's so many. Uh, top, 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 nope. So if we get verdicted, we can just use the Jailer plus the Pyroblast to get the Monarch back. We have 27 cards left in our deck. There's a Cementer again? Sure. All right. Now we're just going to Verdict plus Jailer. Pyroblast. That's fine. Oh, wait, we still don't have enough white swords. Yeah, I do. I have the Ashland now. Okay, cool. We're in okay shape. We're in okay shape. I don't know why I only have four minutes left, but I do. Okay, I don't think we're going to be able to attack around, which sucks. Right? Yeah, we don't have enough creatures to attack around unless the Jailer just resolves, but they're just like cantripping like a fiend. Ugh. This game has been very, very silly. Close up to Fairy. Um, whatever, it just doesn't matter, right? Here's a supreme verdict. Maybe you should have attacked first to see if there's like a universe where they don't block, but I imagine they would block. Alright. Golly, this game has been stressful. I think I'm dead. If, oh my god, what the fuck? If they have a four share, I'm dead, I think. Oh, well, they don't. Force of will, it's a good start. Sending them back on an empty board is good. What you got? Something for four mana? I'm at three minutes. Nurse, that's scary. Jace is also scary. How many mentors have they been through? Are they dead? Can they, like, actually kill me? Before they deck to this monarch, or I guess, I guess just deck in general. All right, yeah, they're fate sealing. Smart. All right, we'll play another turn or two. Like I said, I think I'm dead. We had to use more resources to get the monarch back than they did, and then they had another nurse that follow up. So, I think we're dead, but. I shouldn't have six. I can't have six here, actually. Guest. Took it that. Brainstorm. They have 13 cards left. Oh my gosh. Are we going to have time for modern? Yeah, we probably will. I'll probably just stay up late. I think I'm pretty close to conceding. I'm going to take one more draw step here. See what it is. All right, yeah, we're dead. That was an interesting game, at least. I mean, mirrors play out like this, I suppose, but I can't help but wonder if, like, the the, the monarchs kind of what it became about, and I didn't expect them to have three mentors back to back to back, and the third mentor really is what got us. Having to spew the the palace jailer so often was like pretty rough. We maybe could have played that game a little bit better. I mean, look at all this. We've played the maximum amount of magic possible. We're two and a half hours in, and we're only three matches in. This is why legacy fair decks are hard to test online, because you just, like, with Force Will, you can never F6. And so, unlike Modern, where you can just click F6 through half the turns, you have to, like, sit there and click the one button obsessively, and it makes legacy a little harder to, like, test when you're playing fair decks online. Speaking of, I'm actually going to go use the bathroom quick. I will be right back, chat.
All right, we back in here. We back in here. All right, one and two, not the spot you want to be in, but they've all been close. And that's the thing about this deck is it's a lot like a Miracles deck where all your matches are close. And so, like, it is very skill intensive. And maybe maybe if I knew a little bit more what's going on here and sideboard a little better, I can win that one. And then, like, the mirror is very much a coin toss. And I maybe screwed up my turns and, like, my Palace Jailer equity. I don't know. But the point is, all of the matches are close. A lot of the matches feel winnable. And despite as clunky as the deck, like, as clunky as the deck looks, the forces really do a lot to make up for it. Hand is atrocious. Hand is a lot better. We don't know if Swords is good, which makes you want to pitch it, but we have the brainstorm to get rid of it if it's bad, so I'm actually going to pitch a land. It's greedy to pitch a land to keep the Jace, but we have, I want Force Fodder, and I'm really relying on this brainstorm to fix this hand. Blitz, what's up? Does Legacy go to time every round? If you're playing Bear decks, it often does. Yeah, especially like the fair mirrors like that. Delver. Alright, well, Swords is great. I feel like a genius. Uh, we have a second Brainstorm. Uh, still gonna play this. In case they have a discard spell, I'm gonna want to fire off the Swords. Make them counter it. and Because I have two Brainstorms. So, the reason, the only reason I played this is because like there's a chance I fetch and play Swords. Did not flip. All right. Ponder. Sure. That's fine. I assume this means they're going to flip Delver, which makes me want to just untap, play my land swords. Mm. See, this is what I was thinking. Is like, when I, when I see the black lands, like, is it shadow? And it is shadow. It is, in fact. All right, well, that's good to know. They really wanted one of the cards off the Ponder, I guess, so they like Street Wraith. Interesting. Hmm. I guess we should do another upkeep. We should make a move on their upkeep. Yield to that. Brainstorm. All right. Okay. Pass priority here. I'm hoping they're going to fetch. And they did not. There's a lightning bolt. Are they playing like, wait, are they playing Grixis Shadow? It's really strange. Planes. I would like to sword you, please. Yeet. Yeah, yeet! Making, making them potentially use their brainstorm at an opportune time. There's value there. I'm glad we waited to upkeep. Probably about to get shadowed. Just like Fetch, Shock, like Street Wraith. I guess it's still not enough because Sword Spot Shares is good. Never mind, we're not about to get Street Wraiths. We might get Big Fished. Not super worried about being Big Fished, though. You also can't, so it has to be like a Tassiger. There's no way they play Tassiger, right, chat? There's no way they play Tassiger. Anarchy! How do I write a sideboard guide for someone? What do you mean? I usually use Google Docs. It was great seeing you in Qs. It was, but it was great. If I remember right, your tournament didn't go that great, and I'm sorry for that, but it was great meeting you and talking to you. I'd like to brainstorm. I'm going to cast a shitty one first. I'll counter it. They did not counter it, chat. <laughs> um, is there a universe where I'm jamming Jason next turn? I guess there is. <sighs> to thee, I say blech. I need to decide what's important. So what do I want to hide? I want to hide the swords, maybe the verdict, something like verdict, swords. By the way around, let's do swords, verdict. We'll just like hide it and then we'll jam the Jace into everything next turn because our, we're not breaking out of this brainstorm lock and we have two forces that we don't want to use. So, we're going to just slam the Jace up it works, and when it doesn't, we're going to be real sad. 
They drew that bolt, right? I need to actually figure that out. I think they did. Sucks. Yeah, they definitely drew it. Yep. I mean, I'm having trouble with cuts is my issue. I usually have help. I mean, just talk with some of your friends or something. I don't, I don't understand. Like, <laughs> if you need help, just talk to somebody. It's okay to talk to other people. Bounce thoughts off those. It didn't, but it happens. Glad Anderson won, though. Yeah, that was super sick, seeing Anderson win that. That was awesome. All right, now they're big fishing. I think they're big fishing. Oh, they're big fishing. Big fishing. I'm actually not that excited for them to be big fishing. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah. We left Verdict on top. This is how we do it, chat. This is how we do it. Look at this. Look, just look at it, chat. Look how gorgeous it is. See, I uh, put that in the Shadow Realm. See, how do you not play a Verdict main deck? Look at this. Look at this. Just feast your eyes on how juicy that was. That was... <sighs> It's okay to talk to people. It is. I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's some kind of like pride that comes with like, okay, if I'm going to write somebody a cyber guide, like I want it to be like mine and I did it all. And it's like, that's just like utter nonsense. Like just sit down and talk to people and be like, okay, hey, like it's okay if the idea is not yours. We didn't get wasted in chat. I don't know how I want to play this turn. Because they have four cards in the end, and I haven't really given them a chance to daze anything. So I feel like one of them at least is days, and maybe one of them is stubborn enough. They might have multiple pieces of soft permission. Which makes me want to just pass. This Jace is going to be hard to line up. We know about a lightning bolt, I think. I'm pretty sure we know they have a lightning bolt in the end. Now, Delver is the least assuming of all the threats they have. So, like, I still want to wait it to flip so they gain more life so that their shadows don't game in all right well they have another bolt that is a lot of lightning bolts jet okay well now that they have access to two bolts that makes me want two swords so that they do not pressure my left total all right cool they also bolt themselves twice and get within shadow range it's really bad though four mana you got it all right they have two bolts and other things I think it's Jam Jay's time. I think there's like no chance this resolves. And if it does, it's just getting bolted to high heaven. Is there anything I want to just brainstorm? Oh, they're going to force it, pitching Delver Secrets. So one of their cards at least is a lightning bolt. And they're forcing. What am I missing here, Chad? All right, I mean, if you're going to pitch threats, like, I'll take a him to Torok for four mana. That is, this card does not seem very good. It's just like whether I'm hemming blue cards or bolts, and I'd much rather hem the blue cards. The bolts are kind of bad in this matchup. I don't understand. I'm very confused as to how this is playing out this way. But whatever. Whatever. I We take those. We take those. Brainstorm. Yeet. Ooh, those are some nice ones. I just kind of want to get rid of forces. Is that insane? I kind of just want to get rid of forces. I want to get rid of land too, actually. Land. Maybe land force. Land force. I like getting a land force. All right, let's fetch. Grab an island. Cast Arkham's Astrolab. Draw a card. Is it a land? Let's find out. It is not. It is a monastery mentor. Do I want to get things dazed? Is the next question. Days me. I know you have bolts anyway, so I'm pretty cool getting dazed here. Actually, I'm not that cool getting dazed here, but it's fine. Pick up Astro Lab. Draw more cards. This gives me a thing to do with my mentor next turn. Don't hate to see it. Don't hate to see it. That force seems loose. I agree. Did an opponent accidentally register a modern deck? It appears they did, but they did remember to put a force will in it at least, so that's a, that's an upside. I have not seen catch yet. Bolt my Teferi. Deal. That would make it a three for one, as I draw another card off Astrolabe. All right, that was a very good draw step. Fetch, grab an island. Island, they have three cards. All right, so they're gonna wanna bolt my mentor, and I don't want that to happen. 
So, what do we do about it? Are we going to force? I think we are. I think we're going to force a bolt on my mentor. Are we, are we forcing this bolt? I want to force this bolt. I think I want to force this bolt. Mentors are so good. I want to force this bolt. And we have a ponder too. Just like, blech. Get it out of here. More tokens, please. More tokens. Get your tokens here. You want them? We got them. Premium tokens. Lots of tokens. Doesn't die to bolt anymore. Look at the 4-4. Four, four. All right. Yeet. Yeet. Draw a card. Oh, Snapcast Image is so nice. Ponder. Uh, uh. Should have used this land because I have pent pent a mana up as long as I don't get wastelanded. I have messed up my tapping chat. Ponder. We take those. Hey Mo, thanks for the sub, the resub, the three months. How's it going? Sorry about the. Uh, I guess slow moving gameplay. We're on match three. It's been three hours, but I really appreciate your your resub. It means a lot to me. If you have a sub list you want to play this month, post it in the cord. You know what to do. Or maybe you don't. It's up to you. But I really appreciate it. You got to auto you the triggers? No, I want to click through them all. All right. All right, fine. I will. The thing is, there's a chance I do want to respond to them. So I didn't want to, but it's fine. It's fine, chat. It's fine. It's fine. Don't you dare complain. Should I have to library? No, I'll take it. All right. They're like dead as shit, right? How many cantrips can we play next turn? We have a land on top of our deck. So we get to fairy draw. That's two. Yeah, we can kill them as long as they do not play a blocker. Hell, even if they play a blocker, we have a magmatic sinkhole to kill just about anything in their deck. So I think you're just dead. Okay, that is fine. That is a 16-16. That may... I'm sorry, that is a massive, massive... And we'll go to the graveyard. Oh, enabling revolt. Chat. That's so sexy. All right, all right. That's cute. That was cute. I give, I'll give it to him. That was cute. All right, we're going to draw a bunch of cards on my Teferi again. Look at that. Look at that, chat. Look how clean that is. Mr. Drake, PC Chaser Sasser. Trying. I'm not doing very well this season. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Come on. We're playing Magic. So, in case you don't know, Shadow is a very good matchup for this deck. So, it's the Plowshoes plus various other things just, like, great in the matchup. And, and all of our Moat and Snaring Bridge things are very good. I almost want Rips, too. I just want it all. Just give me all the things. I don't care. Blood Moon, bring it in. Doesn't matter. This, sure, why not? Uh, that's probably it. I don't want more. Is Sinkhole better than Rest in Peace? Probably. So get these out of my deck. Is Blood Moon better than anything? I don't know. Probably. Uh, what sucks? Force Negation sucks big time. All the forces are actually kind of bad. We're going to get like a bunch of forces. Spells are good. Spells are sucks. Is Counterspell good? Counterspell seems fine. It's not exciting, but it is fine. Jace seems atrocious, so we're going to cut one. There you go. Did, did the math. Can I get some thoughts on the new 3-drop Mythic Fairy? <laughs> Could you be more obsessed with fairies, though? My god. I think the card is fine. It is probably legacy playable at some point, especially as long as Depths is really popular. So, like, I'm definitely going to try it as an answer to, like, a Merit Lage, but I can't say I'm overwhelmed by it. Would Thrun the Last Troll be good against me? No, I would not consider Thrun the Last Troll good against this deck. I have two Council's Judgments and uh, a Moat. So, like, I have three answers to it. And it is 100,000 mana. I mean, it's better than some cards. You're like, okay, Drake, is it better than Colossal Dreadmaw? Then, yeah, yeah, it is. But, uh, it's, I wouldn't consider it, like, a, a hoser. I can't tell if I want to keep this hand or not. That's why I'm thinking about it for so long. Because, like, the Astrolabe is kind of nice, but it's kind of just slow. And we're on the draw. The Counterspell is not guaranteed to line up. We have to play, like, end of days basically every turn, but we do have a removal spell. I'm going to keep it because our lands don't get pressured. Like, I, I value four land hands a lot. So, like, even though this hand's not exciting in the spell department, having just, like, functional mana is really attractive. Drake can make Karanos playable. I cannot. Karanos is very, very bad. That is fine, opponent. Thrun isn't good against anything. That's not strictly true. I heard all the professional players in the highest tier are saying fairies are going to be broken in all formats. Rough. Rough. I'd like to point out to you that this creature would beat a player with Thrun the Last Troll. I mean, probably, yeah. 
If you can cast it first. Is, actually, is that true? Because you get two hits in with Thrun, right? So you play Thrun on four, they play their fourth land, you attack for four, they play fifth, like, you play fifth land, go, they play fifth land, you hit him for four again, puts him to 12, theoretically. You're like, okay. Then they play Colossal Dreadmaw. You untap, you're like, okay, whatever, land, go, they attack, you block, regenerate, and then untap, you, do you win the race? I think you do. You go to 18, and it's a three turn. Yeah, and you have a clean three turn. Yeah, you just win. You win the race. Come on. See how dumb you are. You're so dumb. You're five head. Uh, I'm going to play Arkham's Astrolabe on one because I want to brainstorm on two with the Arkham's Astrolabe. We're going to hope it doesn't get dazed. If it doesn't get dazed, it's kind of tragic. And maybe we should have fetched. But eh, if it doesn't get dazed, then we're great. Oh, yeah. That's a nice draw step. That is a nice draw step. Karano's great in modern. <laughs> it's still not really very good in modern, right? Like, what is it? what is it good in? Twin's dead. Everybody F in the jump for twin. <clears throat> First of all, the Dreadmaw player is on the play because that's only fair. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll stay with your analogy here. F, Anarchus, aim. I mean, yeah, big F, F for uh, for twin. That's really sad. What are they? What are they doing? They're just like playing a hundred lands. Doing nothing. Does this mean they have Shadow? Do they have, like, some kind of... I don't know. I'm going to try to counterspell them. And when it gets days, I'm going to untap and slam back to basics. That's how this is going to play out. Shadow. Oh, that's just, like, 100,000 mana. All right. Yeah, like I said, we're going to do the thing I just said. Where we're going to... God, Ashley. Look at Ashley here. Look at this. Look at this. This is busted. All right. Counterspell. Yeet! Hope they, they they daze it and we get to untap and back to basics then. Back to basics, back to basics, back to basics, back to basics. Force of will! Pitch force of will! Alright, well, back to basics more likely to resolve now, I guess. And we have Sinkle! It only pluses the force, so we have a turn. We have a turn to wait. Sure. Slamming the shit out of this back to basics chat. Um, we're definitely grabbing a basic here, so let's just do that. Yeet, 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 yeet. May I please hit you with the yeet? Ah, yes, the yeet. All right, there's three cards in graveyard, so we can go for the sinkhole next turn. Hope it works. If it doesn't, we're going to be real sad. I guess we need to brainstorm first, try to find like a force or some kind of counter spell or something. Yeet. They have another land. They have another land? This is bullshit. Do they have Pyroblast? Watch them have Pyroblast. They just like fetch a land and Pyroblast it. Oh, never mind. They have a basic island. That's also kind of bullshit. What the fuck? What the heck? How do you have basics in your, like, million color shadow deck? Normally they play two, and you're playing more colors. I don't understand. Okay, serious question. Is Wear a liability because of all the blue blasts running around? I mean, what do you mean? How would it be a liability? Can I link my plan and deck in Discord and have someone review it? Anarchy, if you want to ship that... I mean, I think there's a spot in the Nova Discord, the Nova Patreon Discord for you to do that, but if you want to do it in my Discord, I'll, I'll do it too. It, may, it won't be immediately. It'll be at my leisure, but I'll do it. But I won't find it in here, so. Hi, Drake popping in to say hi. You'll be background noise. Fair Teddy. How's it going? Jessica has my shit. I believe the term for multiple yeets is to have done some ute. Alright, we're we have uted. Do you, do you say you've uted your opponent? Feels like muted. Um, let's slurm. Which this brainstorm's correct, so we're gonna cast it. I don't think it's gonna get countered, so we're gonna cast it. So. But why are you why are you thinking like you have a force of will? You don't. Oh. Uh okay. I'll I'll pay the one. Yes. May I brainstorm? Yay. Ooh, a moat is nice. Okay. Uh I don't really want a land that gets tapped. And I don't really want anything. I don't want anything. I don't even really want this moat. Uh this will get rid of Brainstorm. Fetch will go grab an island, I guess. 
Um, is there five cards in graveyard? There are, so we can play around days. Eat. Uh, 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 uh. Look at Magmatic Sinkhole chat. Look how impressive this card is. Blow that up. Yeet it. There's no way your last two cards are forced blue card. Right, yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. You already spewed your days. We have things. Let's just get a spawner. I want to try to find a fifth land. Oh, wait, a fifth land. Hey, all good cards, too. Wow. Okay, sure. Uh, top. 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 Do you want to shuffle? No, I do not. The turn is yours. These cards are all great. And if they play a threat, we get to just, like, jailer it or moat or whatever. Worlds, worlds are oyster, chat. We can just make decisions at random, honestly. They picked up Underground Sea. And are just passing. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll just play a mentor and pass. Like, I don't really want to moat them. Like, because if they have another Planeswalker, I don't really want to get moated. Maybe I just, like, Palace Jail. Start drawing cards. What are the chances that's correct? I don't know. Nah, I'm off thinking. We're just going to play the mentor and pass. Because we have an R set on top. And if it dies, we just don't care that much. We just have so many other good things going on. Like, they literally have stone ring like, all their lands. Except an island. They have one black source. They're going to try to save up and get another Liliana? Like, okay. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Liliana's Triumph. That's embarrassing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Whatever, whatever, it's fine, it's fine. Target this. Okay. Utterly embarrassing. Yeet. Sack this. Go. Man, they had a Liliana a second ago, too. We would have discarded a card. That would have been a beating. Moat. Oh, they have a red source. All right, well, sure. Basic Mountain's obviously something that's in your deck. Where's it? If you have Red Blast, that's fine, because you're not going to Red Blast my back to basics. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? We were playing fun games of magic. Oh, they showed me Shadow plus Thoughtseize. Nice! Black cards. All right, we're playing for the 3-2 chat. We're playing for the pinnacle of mediocrity. Thankfully, that match actually went pretty quickly. We might be able to keep this under three and a half hours. You saw Mountain Game 1? I saw Red Game 1. Did I see Basic Mountain? That's so nonsense. How is their mana base so bad? And they wonder why they can't cast their stupid black cards. They drew both basics and had two black cards at the end. I just don't even understand. I, I just don't even understand. I also don't know why they showed me their hand. They could cast those spells and get a time walk and still not win that game. <laughs> I don't understand why they're showing me their cards. Ugh. Sounds like opponent needs Astrolabe. That's big facts, Dom. Big facts. Opponent needs to be playing some Arkham's Astrolabe. I think you could have beaten Adam and also the Red Dover, by the way. Minifer, you're probably right. Like, the Condescend player, I think I spewed a little bit in Game 3 and probably punted. It was really hard, and I was streaming and running low on time. And then the... What else did we lose to? We didn't lose to Blair at Dover, right? What was the other loss? Maybe we did. Did we lose to the Blair at Dover guy? I thought we beat Blair at Dover. Whatever. Condescend is Adam. All right, yeah. Your chick? Neat. Well, he played well. Mulligan. Okay. Sure. Uh, pitch that, because we can't afford to get wastelanded. Uh, Teferi or Ponder, probably don't need the extra force. So we're going to pitch that. And this hand looks functional. It's a five. Is this another Delver match? It appears to be. Eight. Maybe they are, but didn't draw it. I don't recognize you without a forehead protector. <laughs> Very fair. Where's where's the headbands at? I only wear the headbands, you know, when directed to by Team Nova. Two and three is more mediocre? No, three and two is the bread and butter mediocrity. Ponder is hard. Are we about to get stormed? 
Like, the fact they're taking this so along in the pot makes it throw in combo. When is modern? <laughs> right after this. I promise. I will take the time to play it. Actually, since we're sitting here, I guess I can get the new deck to spell that too. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at this beautiful deck. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. All right. Mm, 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 mm. So much extra stuff. Copy. Notepad. Yeet. Opponent is still in the tank on this ponder. This is a hard ponder, huh? All right. Uh, as soon as I said something, they they uh, they uh, are off it. We drew a pretty bad one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're still gonna fetch a basic. Ponder. Looking for lands as well as functional spells. Force of will, my ponder. Chat, what the crap? Oh, I bet they think I'm low on lands because I'm all again so low. All right, that's reasonable. Very fair. I mean, I'll take a pitch true name any day of the week. We take those. <laughs> GP Atlanta? Of course, Teddy. God, I wish I could go to Atlanta. What format is it anyway? It is Legacy, Tiki. All right, well, do they just have another true name? Is that what this means? I don't understand. The forcing the ponder was just unreal aggressive. I almost just want to slam this. <sighs> Whatever. I wanted to, like, play it in case they had another force, because I feel like they forced the crap out of the Astrolabe. But in case they have days, we're just going to... Are they serious with this? Okay. No. <laughs> we take these. I am not super worried about this at all. I'm actually kind of just confused. Okay. What's your plan? Wasteland me. Your plan is to wasteland me. Delve for secret. That is fine. All right. Brainstorm. Two cards left. <laughs> That's a pretty good two cards. Um, let's put Land to Fairy back. We'll play our thing and we'll just ship. I think we're in pretty good shape. Like, we're even on cards. They had a threat to back it up. I mean, they do have a threat. The thing is, like, threat's just, like, not that good. Oh, I should have put a stop in row keep in case it's, like, a force. Yep, we take these. Huh. The question is, do I want to swords it? Sure. Daze me. I think they have a daze. I think this is going to get dazed. <gasps> it didn't get dazed. Okay, chat. We take those. We take those. And now our force can't get countered. This is a little greedy to plus. Oh, never mind. Never punished. Nothing matters. Um, And they don't even have a land. So I'm just going to like play this. Plus this and pass. I like would, ha would be happy to trick with their wasteland if they want to wasteland me here. Ooh, not interested. Not interested. Okay. Feels silly for getting my Ashley spell pierced, though. Because I'd like to be picking up my Ashley. Uh, we're in your instep? Okay. I guess you can't do anything, so I don't know why I floated now. Sorts of pleasures. Plus it to seven. I'm down to just keep taking draw steps. Not really sure what we're doing here, but they seem to be having a good time. I, I drew a flooded stream. I don't know what I'm doing. I should just like draw a card, right? Okay. Oh, well that's pretty good. We take those. I'm glad I drew a card, chat. Glad I drew a card. Let's fate seal look for a land. That's a land. 
Yes. Put it on bottom. The bottom of the library is where I want it, actually. It looks like they did not draw a land. And both of my planeswalkers do not die to lightning bolt. I think this game is over. So much taking, barely any giving. <laughs> but you have eight cards in hand. How do I win? I don't understand. This game... I just... Okay, fine. Look at that. Teferi just metal images all their counter spells. Teferi's busted. Do we want to draw cards? Never. No. We want to protect our thing from Lightning Bolt. Alright, that looks like with Islet, the fact they had Fire Islet makes me think they're Teamer Delver. So, and also that would explain why they didn't have any green cards. So I'm just sideboard like they're Teamer Delver and have run in six, simply because I, f I saw Fire Islet. And if it turns out that they're not, I'm going to feel like a five head. So, hopefully we don't get five headed. Where is Teamer Delver? The only thing on my guide tonight. The only thing I've played against tonight that is actually on my sideboard guide. Okay, two rips. Yeet. Yote. Uh, you Uh, da, 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 da. back to basics. Now a blood moon. You love to see it. Blasts out the wazoo. Wazoo blasts. Um, verdict purge councils. Yeet. Yeet. Um, do I have insane bridge? I don't think I do. I actually don't think I do. And I'm a cyber like I don't. So let's get this out. Get these out. Uh, force negations are atrocious. Uh, I've been cutting a mentor, but I don't think I want to keep doing that. I think I like mentor a lot, so we're gonna we're gonna try to leave the third mentor in again, and just like keep sideboarding, as if I'm just leaving the other mentor. In. Oh, I hate Jason this matchup. People who leave Jason against Team or Delver are insane, insane. They are nuts, bonkers, cuckoo. Don't do it. Oh, Narset also sucks, right? Yeah, Narset sucks. Boom. The Narset might be better now because we have moat. Is the Planeswalker better than the other men? The other mentor? These are the questions I ask myself. We're going to say no. We're going to say no. All right, here we go. The old board 11 cards. We'll be taking in all four blasts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at these blasts. This blast is going to be great. Keep. We also have a Blood Moon. It's just going to be great. Everything's going to be great. Blood Moon. Neat. This is going to be something we don't care about. Yep. I correctly predicted that it was something we don't care about. Um. So the thing is, I think I'm going to ponder on one because I don't even think I'm going to try to counter the Ren and Six on two with Hydro Blasts because I don't want to get dazed because they're on the play and probably have all their dazes in. So we're probably going to ponder on one and not hold up Hydro Blast. Ooh, never mind. I think we're now going to Astrolabe on one because that's even better. Astrolabe. Astrolabe does whatever Astrolabe does. It's card advantage. It's a card on its own and it draws a card. Busted. JK, it's not worth a card on its own. But with Teferi it is. Becomes worth another card. We're pretty well set up for this game. The way this game plays out that punishes us is if they have, like, stuff we need to answer into a true name. But that was not stuff we need to answer. So we're just going to take a trust it. And we're probably just going to play late in the pass. If they play true name, we're going to force it pitching something. And then have Hydro Blast for their Pyro Blast. Oh, wait, no, they don't have Pyro Blast. So this Hydro Blast is just going to be bad. Maybe we're supposed to force pitching the Hydro Blast. They're ancient grudging my Astrolabe. That is insanity. Utter insanity. Just insanity. I am taken aback. Insanity. Death right shaman. How many forces do we live in? I left in three. Because I have force negation, so I got half our forces. Uh, now I don't want to send Blood Moon. I don't want to slam anything. Not really. I think I'm just going to untap, draw, play, ponder. Are you going to like red blast this? If you red blast this, I'm cool. We will play a land and ship. Uh, as it stands, I don't want any of those cards. I want a land. Hey, that's a land. Yeet! <coughs> 
Okay. I still think they're trying to clear the way for a true name, so I think they're going to try to play their fourth land. I cannot believe they ancient grudged my astrolabe. That is insane to me. Utter cuckoo. I am just... All right, they're going to go for training and have red blast back up. Oh, I don't care about that at all. Okay. Kind of want to just play Teferi. Maybe I'll do that. Um, so Teferi plus blast back up. They have four cards in and we have like infinity palace jailers. Uh, planes. What are the chances we could just fetch and blood moon them? I really want to think about that. What are the chances we could just blood moon them? And it works. They have four cards in. We have force backup. I'm just jamming blood moon. We can beat days. We have hydra blast. I'm just jamming this blood moon. I like was like trying to convince myself to like lead the way with the fairy or whatever, and like we just have so much protection. Let's just kill them. Why am I wasting time with this? Like we beat days, we beat flash of storms, we beat forces, we beat force plus pyroblast. We just have all the things. I feel like this guy has tried to big brain so hard he loops back around to little brain. I am inclined to agree. I asked Harlan and Zach about Blood Moon and they seem to hate it. I'm glad to see it be given, given another go. Spell Pierce. I mean, yeah, I'll force that. Yeah, you give it to me. You sold me. Cast. Pitching to Fairy. I want to try to find a white source. This is resolve. Yeet. Uh, well, they don't have any islands, so they can't daze me. So, and there's no reason, there's no reason to, to, like, take this fast. Let's just take it slow. They can't cast anything but bolts and dreadlord arcanists. Flip off lightning bolt. Well, you know, sometimes it'd be like that, Chet. You need to draw exactly the second planes... Or else we can't cast these jailers without Astrolabe. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Yeet. Are we done here? Like, on a scale of one to done here, are we? All right, I guess, I guess not. Okay. Sure. We play on, chat. We play on. Mm-hmm. Ah, there you are. Bye. Blood Moon. See? Blood Moon. Great. Blood Moon, great. We didn't even have to play Magic. We got our 3-2 locked up. Beat Team Redelver EZ. Although Team Redelver brought an Angel Grudge against us, so it probably wasn't a very real match. But we did beat Team Redelver. Ugh. We lost to, what, the Mirror and World Gorger Dragon. We beat Blue Red Delver, Team Redelver, and... I'm having trouble remembering what the other deck would beat is now. Who is this? We two owed them. What were they on? Was it another Delver deck? Oh, Shadow. No, Shadow. Okay. So yeah, we beat Grixis Shadow, Timber Delver, and Blue Red Delver, which is comforting. Those are the decks I wanted to beat. Losing the Mirror is reasonable, especially because it was a close three games that I probably punted, so that makes me feel more confident about the deck. And losing to World Gorger Dragon is probably just always going to happen, and I'm not going to prepare for World Gorger Dragon. I'm probably just going to say that that matchup is going to be bad and move on with my life. So, where do I stand? Well, we drew the moat, like, once, and it was, like, good. I mean, like, it looked like it was going to be an impactful play if my opponent had a better hand, and that is meaningful. Um, we didn't play against Depths at all, so we didn't really get to test out the Ensnaring Bridge attack. But the fact that I didn't really want it anywhere else makes me think we can play something, like, maybe a little bit more flexible. Ensnaring Bridge is just kind of mediocre. And I don't really know. Uh, I've been suggested humility. I don't love that either. The Containment Priest. Oh, no. Bring it back. Oh, what was that? 
was the moment. Bring the moment back. Uh, the containment priest was still medium, but we started to play against combat decks. It may just be not good enough, honestly. Um, so maybe we were supposed to cut this container priest, cut this in steering bridge for like real cards in the depths matchup and just be comfortable having these cards for other matchups. I don't really know. These are the two slots I'm still like working with. I think I like the moat. The moat was reasonable. I liked the blood moon a lot too. I think I'm going to keep the blood moon in. Um, it's like not as good against depths, but it's better than back to basics against the Delver decks. And I think that's meaningful. Um, any other thoughts? I still like the rest of the cyber cards. I like the plans we have laid out, but this card is like a plan for, um, depths card that also has like that I want to have equity in other matchups, which is originally was a Celestial Purge, and Celestial Purge just, like, was kind of terrible. So I want something better. And then this card, I probably want it to just be good against, like, generically good against combo and, like, maybe have some, like, flex use somewhere else. I don't really know. I have kept Teferi over Ponder because you have Arcanist covered with Hydra Blast, so they can't cast the other threats once they, once they advance Teferi's KO, correct? Shadow, why don't you play that deck, Drake? You have the World Gorger after all. Yeah, World Gorger is not good. Second moon. Have you thought about the all powerful card Submerge? I hadn't really put a lot of thought into it. That may be good, especially now that I don't want. I didn't want Snaring Bridge. Like, this is a card that maybe I want. Yeah, let's try Submerge. Actually, that's a good suggestion. Because, like, it's a card that I want in the Delver matchup. Although we're already really good at answering the cards that it answers, but it's still like fine, right? Like it's a reasonable card in the Delver matchup while being fairly good against depths and like maybe having some flex use against some of the stupid Knight of the Reliquary decks. So yeah, all right, I'm willing to try Submerge. I think that's kind of what I want to try next is a Submerge here. And then this Containment Priest, I still don't know what I want it to be. World Gorger, yeah, it's, it, Shadows, you're going to have to look up World Gorger Dragon Combo. If you could find the article by me a while ago, then that'd be pretty good. How do you feel about the combo matchup? Start specifically with this list. Stove Stove, I think that the combo matchup's a little worse than I want it to be as far as Storm goes. So, like, I think, yeah, like you said Storm specifically, I think Storm's harder than I want it to be. I do have some good cards. Having access to Six Forces, Counterspell, Spell Snare, all impactful cards in the matchup. But, like, when you go to the sideboard, it's slim pickings. I'm seriously looking at, like, what? Like, rest in peace surgicals? Like, what what else do I have, right? And I have a bunch of bad cards. I have, like, swords I want to get out of my deck. I have, like, verdict I'm leaving in just to pitch to force. Like, I have singles to get out of my deck. I have, like, six cards I need to get out of my deck. So I'm bringing in, like, pyroblasts now, trying to, like, maybe this. Hell, maybe this, because it attacks. Like, we have slim pickings against the Storm matchup, and, like, we didn't really think Storm was going to be that popular in Qs, so it is intentional that we don't have that many cards for Storm. But I do think, like, our Sneak and Chill matchup's good. I think our Mystic Forge combo matchup is good. I think our Bomberman matchup's not as good as I want it to be. I think that one's a little hard. And I think our Depths matchup is pretty close to even. So those are the matchups I'm looking to shore up with the Ensnaring Bridge Containment Priest slots, I think. And I don't really know how to shore up the Bomberman matchup at all. I just don't really know what works. I've honestly put some thought into Stony Silence. Like, is it insane to play Stony Silence? I don't know. Maybe. Um, and, like, as far as Depths goes, I guess we're going to try Submerge next. But I don't have a, a lot of faith that Submerge is going to be great. But it'd probably be better than Snaring Bridge. Um, so, yeah. Like, I think our store matchup's not great, but it's intentionally not great. No rod. Is no rod better? I guess it is. It's like colorless. Like, is an enchantment easier to answer than an artifact? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Humility over moat also covers Bomberman. But humility is four mana, Dom. That's like, I'm, I'm just never, like, if I'm getting to four mana, I'm probably in pretty good shape, right? Like, a lot of the big problem is an early mentor on turn, like, two-ish. And they just, like, make a bunch of one ones that I can't answer because they only have one supreme verdict. So, like... A lot of it, a lot of the problems I've found come with like multiple creatures and them drawing their Cavern of Souls. Cavern of Souls in the matchup is just like very, very high impact. And there's not much I feel like I could do about that. So I want something a little quicker than the humility. Elves is bad into combo. I mean, Elves probably isn't great at all. As well as Depths, Sneak and Show, etc. It is very good against Depths. It's good against Depths. It's good against what is Bomberman? It's, it's like 
a deck. It plays uh, the Ariok Salvagers LED combo and also has like Monastery Mentor. Just Google it. Like it's it'd be a lot to explain to you, but it's just a it's just a legacy deck. Um, how do you win through Ensnaring Bridge and Moat? Is your Jace the only way with those cards in play? D Rocker probably, but my plan was just to pick him up with Teferi once I was extremely far ahead. I was just gonna like make a million tokens and then pick it up with Teferi and like kill them. That was my plan. Time to put Terminus back in the deck. So, so I've considered Terminus. Like, I was considering sideboarding Terminus and landed on Moat over it. Because I think Moat is a little better because it stays in play. But I did want another answer to True Name Nemesis. And that's something I said at the beginning of the video. So, yeah. Won't answer chat questions. See how it is. Look, I'm not going to describe every legacy deck to you. You have Google as well as I do, Tiki. Uh, anyway. Anything else? Any other thoughts? I don't think so. Yeah, let's like we should find ways to cut these cards. And Harlan said he wanted potentially another Pyroblast in the deck as an answer to True Name. I think if we have Moat, we kind of already have that covered a little bit. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We will we will think more about it. Submerge is a reasonable card, but not insane. And Containment Priest is bad. And maybe maybe we'll try like a Norod. I don't know if Norod's insane, but it seems like it probably has value against Bomberman. But that'll do it for the day. Or, I'm sorry, for this league. We're going to play some Kethis combo next. Oh, God, help me. What are we, three hours in? I'm going to botch the crap out of this. But we're going to play some Kethis combo next. It's a sub list from one of our lovely subscribers in the chat. Five blasts. That's a ton of cyber space. They're broken. What do you want? Stove stove. Thank you for the follow. Um... Anyways, this is the Just Got Mentor deck that I worked on with Harlan and Zach Allen. I'm going to be playing it this weekend at GP Atlanta. And hope to see you all there. If you've enjoyed the content I've produced here today and you've not yet jammed that follow button on Twitch, please do so. It's the easiest way to support me on Twitch and we'll let you know when I go live. If you are also looking to support me and you're watching on YouTube, jam that subscribe button. It's the easiest way to support me on YouTube and we'll let you know when I post more videos. Other ways to support me, my stream, and Team Nova to support my sponsors, which you can see still strewn about my screen. I still have not moved the Mage and Introspective logo into the scrolling list below, so they are still to the top left, or I guess center left-ish. It's my left, center of the screen. Uh, you can see the Mage logo and the Introspective logos there. Mage is a mobile app company, sponsors a lot of a lot of Magic the Gathering players. They're really working hard to get their product out there, and their product is good. They're, they make good mobile apps that I've been very happy with. Um, and, I mean, you can see all over Twitter. If you're on Magic Twitter, you can see plenty of people using it and doing different things with it. It's super great stuff. Check it out. Free to download. Awesome stuff. They also have great stuff coming as, long, as far as a StockX app for Magic the Gathering, which I think is going to be a nice new way to, uh, to buy and sell Magic cards that has some built-in theft protection. So, or, I'm sorry, fraud protection. Hard to have theft protection. But, anyway, you check that out when it comes out. Just follow Mage on Twitter. Easy ways to figure out when that is going to go live. But that should be coming soon. I think they're doing the beta stuff for it now. Next up, we got Introspective, which is a uh, clothing line that sponsors multiple teams in the SCG Tour. They do make our jerseys, and I had, uh, I guess I had a shirt on earlier from them, but I spilled stuff all over it because I'm a klutz. But uh, their clothes, the clothing line's great. I uh, also have a couple hoodies and stuff by them that I'm going to be wearing as soon as the winter time comes around. So their stuff looks awesome. Highly, highly recommend checking them out. You can use code TEAMNOVAMTG to save, I believe it's 10%. I've forgotten by this point, but I think it's 10%. There's uh, there's <laughs> links below in the panels if you're on Twitch and in the description if you're on YouTube. You can check that out. The, it also has the code there for your team over DG and tells you accurately how much you're going to save buying clothes with them. So check them out. We really appreciate the support. Um, and of course, as always, we have a wonderful sponsor beneath my face. Start off with, we got Inkland Customs, which is a artist that follows around a lot of the major magic events. She produces custom tokens and various other art for you. Um, you can buy my token, which you can see to the right of my face here, uh, right there, uh, to the right of my face. And I love the artwork she's done. She's also done our play mats and our logo. Um, she's also going to be doing the new stream emotes that are coming along. I have new stream emotes, new sub badges, all that stuff coming along. It takes time to make, unfortunately, but it's going to be quality stuff. And I'm super, super excited to get all that revealed to you. But it is in the process of being made. So, England Customs is awesome. Supporter, I support her, love her work. And she's going to be, I guess, supporting me still by helping me with my stream stuff. So, check her out. She's awesome. Link below. Next up, we got Manatriers.com, which is the rental service I used to play all these various decks for you. I could not afford to keep switching these decks, switching decks and playing different decks. I'm just flat out honest. So, rental services do let me have the flexibility to play whatever I want in Magic. And so, highly, highly, highly recommend checking them out if you're looking to try different decks. Not really have to worry about the cost. And just, you know, get better at Magic. So, check them out. 
Code Team Nova MTG saves you 15% of your first three months. There's a link to get started below. Check them out. They're awesome. We really appreciate Mana Traders. The End Games is a store in Charlottesville, local to some of our players. They let us buy and rent cards at a discount. You can too, using code Team Nova MTG. You can save 10% off your order with them. Support a local LGS. Support Team Nova. It's hard to see the downsides. Support an LGS, saving some money. There's just all, it's all upside. All upside. Check them out. We really appreciate their support. They're great. Link below. And last but not least, we got hipsofthecoast.com, which is the content production website that Team Nova writes all their articles for. You can see my articles on their website as well as some of the other team members. We really appreciate their support. There's lots of other content podcasts. If you don't want to read Team Nova stuff, you can see plenty of other great content producers as well as various other merchandise, including some clothing. I have a hoodie by them as well. All kinds of hoodies. I'm going to be looking all kinds of fashionable this, uh, this winter. But really appreciate the support. Thank you all for bearing with me, and I'll see you next week.